Gamers, welcome back to the third installment in the road to a thousand days survived in my hardcore world. This video consists of episodes 15 to 21 in my hardcore series and I'll be releasing the next one once enough episodes are created. Also, feel free to leave this video running in the background if you don't feel like watching all of it as it greatly helps the channel. And also like and subscribe, yada yada, let's get into episode 15. Gamers, my favorite biome in Minecraft is, believe it or not, the ocean. And we haven't built anything in it. So today I'm gonna create an underwater city with bases, tunnels, pipes, and more. Let's get started. Step one, gamers, is of course to obtain the relevant materials. We'll be going for a block palette of quartz blocks, blue concrete, and glass for our underwater houses. So let's first get the concrete, of which I have no idea how to make. Okay, after a quick wiki search, gathering of some sand, gravel, and lapis for the dye, we can now make some blue Blue concrete powder. I need to make the dye first, Jesus. And there we go, there's the powder. That should uh, definitely be enough, I think. And I also just realized we don't need to place these in water to make them into like, you know, regular concrete because we're gonna be placing them in water anyway. Hell yeah. The next resource we'll be needing is quartz. And uh, thankfully we do have a little bit left over from the previous video, but uh, yeah, it's definitely not gonna be enough. So it's time to head to the nether and get some more. Okay, and there we go. That should hopefully be enough. We got all of this, plus a little bit more here as well. We also ended up finding an extra piece of ancient debris while I was mining this stuff, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this will be enough. If not, I'll just come back and get some more. Next, it's on to glass. We'll be needing a lot of it. So it's back off to the beach. Bit of digging, bit of smelting, and bang, we're done. And now for the final item, I want some copper to make some nice underwater pipes. And then I'm going to simply just craft it into some blocks. Uh, clearly I've never made it before. There we go. Jeez, that's gonna be a bit expensive. Also, I might have lied, that is not our final block. We need to go back to the nether and get some crimson wood for some crimson trap doors. I feel like that's gonna be a very nice detailing block for our pipes. I'm gonna add it to like the base of the pipes and stuff and just kind of along them. So yeah, I'm gonna head back to the nether, try and find a crimson forest. Well, there we go, there's one. I'm going to hopefully not die, uh, you know, trying to get down here. Grab a bunch of this good stuff and then uh, yeah, I'll head back. Yeah, now it's time for step two, which is to actually find a location. Now, thanks to our Elytra, we can, uh, you know, now just fly around and find locations easily instead of having a bloody walk around everywhere. Now, I know there is an ocean out this way past this jungle, but yeah, here is the nearest ocean to our base, so I think this is gonna be a pretty good spot. Let's dive in and just uh, have a quick look. And after swimming around and scouting out some locations, I ended up finding this spot here, which is absolutely perfect. For step three, I wanna build a little bit of a dock that allows you to go, you know, to and fro the bottom of the ocean. I know it's not really that far down, but uh, yeah, I feel like it's it's definitely gonna be a nice thing to add. What the f that dolphin is trying to steal my block. Hey, that's mine. What the hell are they doing? Oh, I'm actually like swimming with the dolphin. Can I pick this block up? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we'll make this block here the actual elevator down. And now let's surround this with some quartz blocks like so. And then I think let's place in some of these blocks here so that we can actually turn them into concrete so that we can place them on these blocks here. There we go. Actually, we don't need to place them on all of those blocks. Now let's go up again with the quartz here. And now all around this, I wanna add some spruce wood. And then stemming off from each of these little entrances that we're gonna have, I wanna have a little dock of its own. Alright, and there we go. There's all of our docks added in. And now I want this little elevated building to be pretty simplistic, so let's just raise these up once again. Alright, now let's chuck our stairs in these blocks here, and then up on the roof, let's just make like a little plus shape like that. I think that's gonna look pretty nice and simple. Now I think I wanna add some fences to the actual dock here, just to add a little bit of detail. Okay, and now let's whack our fences here, let's chuck some fence gates in the middle of that. <laughs> Okay, there we go. There's all the fences and fence gates added on. Let's place some lanterns around the place as well. I think maybe on these corner blocks here will probably look the best. Now let's make a couple of boats and chuck those in just for some added detail as well. And there we go. I think that's looking pretty good. We've got a nice entrance down to our city. Then I went ahead and grabbed some glass and started building the little tube that would take you down to the ocean floor. I also made sure to add a nice little entrance for down here too, making sure it's in a similar style. And so now we have a nice little central point for our underwater city. And that leads us on to step four, creating the city. 
Okay, just before we can start building our village, uh, it turns out I actually completely forgot about one block for our block palette, which is Deep Slate. So I'm going to go ahead and mine a bunch of that, and uh, I'll be back once again. Holy shit. Did you guys see that? I didn't think a creeper could do that much damage to us still. Even with all of this armor. I guess I don't have my chest plate on, but... Jesus, dude. That was so close. Well, on the bright side, we have gotten a whole bunch of cobbled deep slate, which we will be turning into polished deep slate for our blocks. Uh, hopefully this is going to be enough. Probably not. I will end up just probably coming back and getting some more when we need it. So yeah, now it's time to get back to the spot. Okay, we're back at the dock uh, entrance thing. Let's head down. And yeah, so now it's time to find a suitable location for our first base. And this spot right here looks pretty cool. So let's head over here and start placing some blocks. And yeah, so all of these builds are going to be in kind of like a Subnautica style base. If you've seen that game before, I'm probably showing a picture of it here. Yeah, we'll be going for a base kind of in that style. This is going to be very annoying having to go up for air every five seconds. Actually, maybe if we place a door down, I think that'll work. Uh, we might as well just place the actual door down for the base. So let's chunk that in there and we can use that for air. Hell yeah, that's so good. Okay, along the sides here, let's add in our quartz blocks like so. And then above the door, of course, we're going to place some stairs like this. Then beside those, I went ahead and added some glass in for the front windows. And also our blue concrete for on the corners to add some color to our pretty monochrome block palette. Then I crafted up some polished deep slate walls to add this nice little detail into the corners. And I also added another layer of deep slate along the top of the walls. And so on the sides of the build here, we're obviously not going to be having another door. So let's place place in our blocks like that and then we're actually going to be doing something different let's place in some glass blocks like this and then in the middle here let's place uh give me a second uh yeah in the middles here we're going to be placing some glass panes like that and then uh followed by some more glass blocks and finally another strip of blue concrete like so then for the back here so we actually have room to you know place stuff on the inside and not have it all be taken up by windows let's just place in some solid quartz like this and then we'll once again transition back to our blue concrete blocks on the corners now on this side we're once again just going to repeat what we did on that side. Oh, and I just realized sponges would be a very, very handy for this because I completely forgot we need to clear out the freaking inside of the water here. Well, let's craft up a bunch of slabs here for the roof of the build. And so coming away from all of these, we're going to place in a deep slate slab like so. And then we're pretty much just going to fill in the entire roof here with some more deep slate slabs. I definitely didn't make enough. Let's go make some more. Oh, and another block that I need to get is sea lanterns as well. That'll definitely spruce up the uh, builds here. It'll make it nice and bright as well. I don't actually remember how to get them. I think they're from like uh, those underwater things. I can't remember the freaking called, man. And yeah, so there we go. There's our first basic house done. Actually, we need to add in this wall design as well into the, all the corners. Uh, yeah, so sorry. Once again, I have lied. Now, you might be asking, how are we actually going to get inside our base here? And to answer your question, I have no idea. <laughs> And so what I ended up doing to solve this problem was to actually move the door in by two blocks, place some blocks to get rid of the water, and then add a button next to the door so we can actually open it. Okay, now before we continue, I want to see if I can go ahead and find an ocean monument somewhere so that we can actually get some sea lanterns for our houses. Because, uh, yeah, they look kind of dull and boring right now. And while I was scouting the uh, ocean area here, I believe I did spot one. I'm not exactly sure if it was one. Oh, Jesus, okay. We've got the dolphins with us. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm not gonna lie. I've never actually, you know, explored one of these before in survival. I don't actually think this is an ocean monument. I think this is just some, like, underwater ruins or something. It's kind of embarrassing how little I know of this game. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, get rid of some of these guys. This guy's got one of those Nautilus shells as well. Hell yeah. I think that's for, like, conduits or something like that. Oh my god, dude. Go, get away from me. But yeah, here it is. Here's the, uh, sea lanterns that we need. Let's make sure we use our silk touch pickaxe. Because I believe they do break, uh, if you don't use the silk touch pickaxe. Okay, there's a grand total of two. It's not the greatest. Hopefully we can find some more. Oh, there's a chest there. Oh my goodness. I wonder what's going to be in that. Actually, I actually have no clue. Okay, luck of the sea. One emerald and some coal. Uh, I'm not even going to grab the wheat. Cool, dude. Well, it looks like that was it for the sea lanterns, unfortunately. We've got another chest, though, with another enchanted fishing rod. Okay. Oh, there's another chest. Buried treasure map. Okay. That's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, that kind of sucks in terms of, uh, you know, not finding any sea lanterns. So yeah, I might go uh, exploring this ocean a little bit more and hopefully we can find some more. And after searching for what felt like, um, yeah, probably like 10 minutes, we finally found one. Oh, yes. Is that what I think it is? It looks like it. 
Oh, there's even more down there. Oh my god. Okay, this might actually be the proper temple. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh my god, there's the guardians. Dude, I just got goosebumps. I know they freaking jump scare you in this goddamn game, dude. And I honestly don't know how to deal with them. I'm kind of scared right now. Oh my god. Okay, this thing is huge. I'm not gonna lie. Let's just send it, okay? I was thinking I'm gonna look up a freaking tutorial video on how to deal with these guys, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna gun it in. Come here, mate. Okay, they don't really do that much damage. Are you gonna like die though? Like, holy mother of god. Oh my god, dude. How many are they? And they take so many hits to die. Oh, see, so yeah, that thing, dude. Oh my god. That is scary as ball sack. Okay, we're getting kind of we're getting kind of overrun here. Uh, time to run. Time to run, boys. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, I wonder what the practical way is of dealing with those guys, because that's kind of scary. But I really want those freaking sea lanterns, man. Should we just try sending it V2? Alright, in we get, boys. Just kind of ignore them. Okay, we're getting beamed. Oh no, we're getting mega beamed. Okay, no, 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 no. That's gonna do a lot of damage. Oh my goodness. What does that do to us? Mining fatigue for four minutes? Are you kidding me? Man, now I can't freaking... Oh, dude. Now, look at that. Are you kidding me? Now we can't get the sea lanterns. Actually, I just came up with an idea. This might work. Theoretically, if we build, like, just a tunnel that leads us all the way to there, unseen by the guardians, we should be able to just mine them. Now, that means, of course, we're gonna need a bunch of blocks, and thankfully, there's a little grass island here, so let's just, um... No, oh, well, we're gonna have to wait for this mining fatigue. Um, just give me a second. I'm gonna wait that out uh, right here. Dun -dun, sometimes all I think about is poo. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my god, the icon. It's strobing. That means we're almost done. Yes! There we go. Now we can officially start mining some blocks. Hell yeah. Okay, now that we have our blocks, let's start our tunnel. Maybe, like, over yonder. Oh, my God. What is he beaming? He's beaming a squid? What the... <laughs> That's so rude. Oh, my God. Oh, don't come near me. Holy crap. Dude, they're just out here literally slaughtering the wildlife. That's so mean, dude. Okay, I wonder if we can just make, like, a bridge like this above the water. I wonder if they can actually attack us outside of the water. I don't know if that's... Oh, my God, dude. And we... You... Are you kidding me? I just waited here for five minutes and it just, it literally just jump scared me. I made possibly the saddest jump scare noise I've ever made in my life. And yeah, of course, man. We're gonna have to go get like buckets of milk if we want to do this. Literally, I just suck down a f***ing... <laughs> Literally, I just suck down a bucket of milk so that I can go and <laughs> get these sea lanterns. So let's just build this tunnel all the way out here and see if they can keep doing it. Oh my god, get away from me. Stop, dude. You're actually gross. Like, stop touching me with your beams. Okay, here we go. We are above the absolute treasure that we need. Yeah, I think this should work because they're not going to be able to see us. Hopefully. God damn it, I need more blocks. Okay, give me a second. Think about his pure late nights in the... Oh my god, and I just realized I cannot get the blocks because of this... Man, this is so... This is actually really frustrating, dude. I just want lights for my freaking village. Why is it so hard? All right, we've got more dirt. Okay, we have... Vi no, you prick. God damn it, another five minutes. Okay, at least that allows us to just kind of go willy-nilly. So let's place all of these, and then we'll have this, like, kind of be the access down to the actual area. Okay, and now as for the tunnel down, let's build this down this way. We're just going to surround everything here with our blocks. Okay, there we go. We should have our uh, Mission Impossible setup completed here. I'm praying that this is going to work. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to be pretty upset. And now I think I want to make a tunnel down to these ones as well, because that's like another eight. How many? Eight. Yeah, dude, that's going to be pretty good. So let's branch off our tunnel here and make a secondary tunnel. Oh my god, get away, dude. You're actually... I'm sorry. You're feral. Dude, this tunnel must look so weird from, like, far away. Like, what the hell is this? <laughs> And once again, I'm going to run out of dirt. That's kind of annoying. Let's just extend this over this way. And then we're going to go down from here. Once again, we're about to run out of blocks. I would need to just like grab a whole freaking load or something. I swear, dude. Okay, they're actually doing some damage here. I'm going to retreat back up to the surface. Okay, and once again, I'm going to wait out this mining fatigue and uh, we'll grab a few more blocks and uh, yeah, we'll see how our tunnel fares. Okay, that should be all the dirt we'll need, hopefully. We should be able to get those first four sea lanterns without any troubles. So uh, let's uh, grab those. 
Oh god, there's a hole there. Oh man. Okay, there we go. We've got our first four. So let's once again extend our tunnel down. We're going to probably... Yep, there it is. How's it going, buddy? Let's extend our tunnel down. Christ. Oh no. I misclicked. God, freaking damn it. How am I going to do this now? Okay, we're just going to leave that there and we'll destroy it when we come back to the tunnel. Okay, let's get a roof. Let's get the roof. Oh my god, dude. Du -du -du. It's time to go. Oh my god. Dude, if I put this on, we will literally take less damage. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Mining fatigue's got two minutes left. We need to get this done before that goes away so that we don't get reset and have to wait another five minutes. You know what I'm saying? Ah. Ah. Ooh. E. Ah. If, you, if I'm making weird noises, that's how you know I'm in danger, honestly. <laughs> Okay, I cannot seal myself in because I would actually probably die. So let's do that. Jesus, dude, if I actually didn't think of that then, we would have drowned because I can't actually mine blocks. Okay, once again, we're going to wait out this mining fatigue and then we should be able to get the rest of those blocks, hopefully. Okay, gamers, we're fully reset. Let's get back in there and get the rest of those freaking thingamajigs. Down we go. We're going to have to dig this dirt. Okay, there it goes. Oh my God, I didn't connect it up. No. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Get it. Oh. Oh my god, dude, I forgot to connect it up, you idiot. I'm gonna leave that open just in case if they somehow freaking give that effect to us again and we're stuck here. Okay, let's get all of them. Oh my god, don't come through there. Yes, give it to me, give it to me. Okay, that sounds kind of weird. What the I think that's the last one. Yes, 14, that should be enough, hopefully. Okay, yeah, I don't even care about you. We got what we needed, we're out of here. Thanks, dolphin guy, off we go. Oh, hell yeah, straight back to the freaking thing. Okay, gamers, we are back at the underwater city. It's time to go back down and add in some of our details. Oh my god, okay. Thank you, Mr. Dolphin, but we don't really need it right now. So, firstly, a nice spot to add in our sea lanterns. We're gonna just probably do one for each base because, like I said before, we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, of them. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's a nice looking spot right above the door as well. The next detail I want to add is going to be our pipes, uh, of which we need to get more copper. We probably will have to go back to base and grab the rest of the stuff that we smelted. But yeah, I want to add some little details kind of like this maybe on this side let's just add a single pipe that will theoretically run underwater like that and then at the base of the pipe here let's add these trapdoors around to kind of look like you know i don't know something and i think what i might do to actually make this look a little bit more like it's actually going into the ground is uh let's remove some of these blocks here so that we can actually place another one like that and there we go now it kind of gives a better illusion of it actually going into the ground and yeah so that just about does it for our first little house here and now i want to go ahead and add in something a little little bit bigger, a little bit better, maybe over in this area over here. But before that, I'm going to quickly fly back to base to get more of our copper blocks. So uh, yeah, just give me a second and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Now let's get started on our larger house. So for this larger house, we once again started off by creating the base. Then I added the door frame, side wall, back wall, and the other side wall. And you might be wondering why there's a gap here. And we'll get back to that, don't you worry. And instead of adding a roof, this time we're raising it up to be two stories tall. And so after adding on all of those walls, then we slapped on our roof. Okay, and there we go. There's that part of the base done. I actually have something kind of cool that I want to add right here So on this face here of the wall, we're gonna raise these blocks out like so then let's add some stairs in all of the corners uh, not like that, what the hell? Now in front of this, right in the middle, let's place a block of copper and then we're gonna add some lightning rods all the way around this and uh, yeah, there we go. That's the design there. It's kind of like a vault, like underwater door thing. I don't really know how to explain it, but yeah, looks kind of cool. Now one thing I also wanna check, does this look cooler having the trap door in front of it? Yes, it does. That looks so much better, holy crap. Let's do the same over here. Bam, hell yeah, that looks awesome. Now, as for this area over here, this is where we're going to be adding in our little tunnel design. So let's branch this over this way like so. We might actually even go up as well over here like this. Now at the ends, let's add in some quartz blocks like this. Okay, and now as for the roof of this, we're going to add some stairs in like this. And uh, this might end up looking kind of weird. So uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do here. And what I ended up doing to fix this was actually adding in pillars to separate the windows I wanted to add in. And this just made it way easier to line 
line everything up together. And there we go. There it is added with the roof as well. And yeah, so now this tunnel is going to lead over to another base. Pretty much, you know, exactly the same as that one. So yeah, once again, let's get started. Okay, and there we go. There's our secondary little house done. I decided to make this one into like a bit of an observatory kind of thing where we have like this nice glass dome of a roof and then all the walls as well are, you know, nice and glassy so you can see out into the ocean. Now it's time to go around and add in all of the details. And I just realized this is going to look weird because I made these into slabs. Um, that's all right. That doesn't look too bad. We can do that. Yeah, so I'm going to add all of these to all of the corners and then I'll go ahead and add in some copper piper details as well. Oh my god, dude. Jesus. This guy's just throwing shit at me. What the hell? All right, that's it. Come out, you absolute little prick. Ooh. Oh, I thought he dropped a trident then, but it was just the one that he's throwing. God damn it. That would have been so cool. Okay, and for the final touch of this base here, I think adding a sea lantern onto this spot right here will look kind of nice. So let's surround that with some trapdoors as well. And yeah, that's all right. It's kind of the best spot that we can actually add it in just because the roof is a little bit different. Oh, dude, this is already looking awesome. Just swimming into this area, this looks so nice. But something as well that's going to tie it in nicely as well is adding a pathway that leads between all of the houses. And I just thought of the idea of using sand for the pathway because it's going to, uh, you know, contrast nice from the gravel that everything's situated on. And also it was nice and easy to get just over there. Now, I of course want it to start off from our elevator over here. And I think I want the main pathway to be three blocks wide and then all of the pathways that branch off to the houses are going to be one block wide just to make it you know kind of I don't know how to explain it okay <laughs> just shut up <laughs> okay we'll just leave it there for now let's fill all of these in with some sand blocks as well and yeah just looking at that like that is the best pathway block we could have chosen for this that looks so nice dude okay so there's the main pathway added in uh, so far now let's branch it off to all of the actual houses There we go, the perfect amount of sand. I mean, we're of course gonna have to go get more because we're gonna be adding more houses in, of course. All right, now for our next build, I'm thinking a nice underwater greenhouse, maybe in this area here will look pretty nice. So let's get started. Okay, there we go. There's the exterior of our underwater greenhouse all done. Now it's time to head inside and uh, get rid of all of the water. <laughs> This is going to be, uh, yeah, an absolute pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, so we'll just be using sand to fill up everything and uh, yeah, give me a second, I'll get this done. Oh, and just before I forget, let's actually add in our sea lantern here as well. I just thought of that. Hell yeah, that looks awesome. All right, back in we get, oh my Jesus Christ. Okay, settle down, Thunder. All right, now it is time to start decorating the inside of our greenhouse here. Starting off with a lantern at the top. And now let's just sprinkle in a bunch of all the random blocks that I grabbed from the surface just before. So we've got a bunch of grass to break up the, uh, you know, repetition of the flowers. And then, of course, let's just start adding in our flowers, making sure to add in all of the variety into every single one. And there we go. That's a nice looking underwater greenhouse. One extra thing that I thought I might try is, uh, you know, we got an egg here from a chicken. Oh! <laughs> Dude, no way. I'm thinking like, there's no chance this guy's gonna hatch. But there we go. We now have a little chicken boy in here. Hell yeah, that's awesome. All right, now let's fix up our door. Let's add our button in here as well. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about that. Just forget that's there. And I almost forgot we actually have some oak leaves as well. I forgot to add these in. So maybe we can actually cover up that block there. Hell yeah. Now let's add some in in the roof as well. This will definitely look nice from the inside and the outside as well. And now that we're all done with our underwater greenhouse, it's time to go ahead and just, you know, add in a whole bunch more of these standard houses around the place as well. And so I'm just gonna be doing that as a very quick time lapse, starting right now.
Alright, and so, with our village now done, that just about concludes this video. Gamers, I have an immense fear of heights, which is why I've never created a treehouse over hundreds of builds. Okay, I lied. That's not the real reason. It's actually because I suck at them. So, this episode, I'll be creating a giant treehouse village in the jungle to improve my skills. Let's get started. Okay, first up, we're actually not gathering blocks, surprisingly enough. I'm actually very low on fireworks. As you can see, I only have 10 left, and I've utilized all of my gunpowder already on said fireworks. So, we're going to head down into our cave here and, uh, you know, just farm up a bunch of creepers. Uh, so, yeah, let's get started. No, you absolute prick. God, holy jackpot. Look at all those green boys over there. Oh, do you see that? Oh, we got a disc. The skeleton finished him off and we got a freaking disc. That is awesome. What one did we get? 13. Oh, of course, it's the freaking creepy one. Why, man? God damn it. That would have been so cool if it was actually like cat or something. All right, well, we've escaped with 22 thanks to our uh, looting three... S oh, looting two sword over here. Sorry. So let's head back up to base and make a, a bunch of fireworks. All right, and there we go. There's a whole bunch of fireworks. Hell yeah, that is awesome. Okay, and now starting off with getting the resources. Uh, yeah, thankfully, we don't have to get any. We harvested all of this jungle wood from uh, the end episode. I'm glad all of these logs actually came into use. So yeah, we're already set and now it's straight on to step two, which is finding a location. Now, I know there is a jungle over this way, but I have kind of mutilated it a bit. Let me just start, turn up my render distance real quick. Yeah, as you can see, where is it? There it is. Uh, I've kind of messed it up. So, yeah. Also, I'm wanting a whole bunch of, like, these tall trees to be pretty close together. But, yeah, I do want to check out the jungle kind of behind our farm base over this way. So, let's tank to the skies and have a little bit of a goose. Oh, actually, while I'm up here, let's finally get rid of this. Because I must have missed a freaking piece of wood up here. Yeah, there it is. See you later, buddy. All right, let's turn the render distance up even higher. It might be a bit laggy, but that's okay. All right, so we've got this jungle over the... Oh, my God, that is actually so bad. My computer can't handle that much uh, power. So, yeah, we've got this jungle over here, and it doesn't look look like there's that many tall trees. We've got like a couple over this way, but you know, it's not the greatest. Let's have a look a little further in maybe. And yeah, they're all just very spread apart, which isn't what I want. I know I can just place some, but it's going to be a pain in the ass and I'd rather just find a spot that actually has them. So it looks like we've got like a sparse jungle over this way, which is pretty cool. Oh, and this actually leads over to a bamboo jungle. Hell yeah, that is awesome. Let's see if there's any good spots here that we could utilize. Oh dude, that actually is nice. Look at all of that there we could connect all of those up i don't know how far we're gonna like spread everything apart but that actually looks really nice this spot right here oh yeah that is perfect okay guys i think location has been found all right, I think this is a pretty decent tree to start off with. I think it's the tallest one in the area. So let's grab out our ladders here and let's slap a ladder on here all the way up to the top. All right, so starting off up here, let's just make like, I don't know, a tree house. Like, you know, maybe the town center of the thing. I don't know. <laughs> so I want the leaves to be the roof of the actual house thing. So let's maybe count down like four blocks here so we can give ourselves enough room. And then let's start the platform here on this block. Oh man, I really wish I freaking grabbed some shears. Oh, I've got some. What the? <laughs> Hell yeah. Awesome. Now we can just easily clear all of these freaking leaves out of the way. Alright, that's a pretty nice looking platform right there. Now I want a way to connect it up to the... Oh my god, of course it has to go dark right now, man. Yeah, now I want to add in some kind of like walls or some windows or something like that. And so I actually have a pretty nice idea that might actually work. Let's jump back over and uh, give it a go. Okay, so my idea involves placing a temporary block here so we can place some upside down stairs. Then let's add some slabs like so and then place, uh, you know, another temporary block here so that we can place some more stairs here. Now let's remove those blocks. And now I want to connect this up to the top of the tree here with some stripped logs. Now we will have to add in a couple of leaves here to make it actually connect up because, uh, yeah, those leaves naturally aren't there. So let's actually just quickly add all of those around here as well. Now let's connect these up to the top. Let's strip all of those as well. And then I think for the top part here, let's add some more upside down stairs like that. Now let's take another quick look from over here. And yeah, that is looking awesome. I love that. I don't know if I want to put anything in the actual window. I think I just want to leave it open. I really like that, like, just open look, I guess. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. The hell? 
Can I climb, man? Okay, so with that design uh, solidified, let's go ahead and add this onto every single side. Okay, there's all of our sides added on. Now I want to go ahead and, you know, maybe add in a little bit of a safety railing along here. And I'm thinking of just doing that with some basic fences. So let's just connect those up like that. And then maybe we can actually add some along the roof as well. So let's do the same on this side and actually take a look from our platform over there. And yes, dude, that is looking awesome. I've literally never made a treehouse in my life before in Minecraft. And I think this is turning out pretty well. Actually, I don't know if I like those fences along there. I reckon we need to do maybe slabs and maybe another pillar or something like that let's just go back up and try something else because i'm not sure if i'm happy with that the f man why can't i climb this goddamn ladder okay so let's try removing all of these and now let's try slabs across here let's add a slab like that and then connect the fences up here as well i think that should look pretty cool let's once again go take a quick look oh, i don't know okay one more idea to fix this up give me a second yeah i don't know it's just not working i think we'll just go back to the fences across there god damn it i don't know it's just not looking good man why does it not look good and so after trying a bunch of different combinations i ended up settling on this design here as I think it's probably the best one that we could have come up with. Okay, now with that done, it's time for a little bit of interior design. Uh, obviously, we don't have quite a lot of area to work with here. Pretty much just like against the tree here is where we can add stuff. So I'm thinking maybe on the sides, let's add in some chests like this and then some barrels at the top. And maybe let's put some stairs under those as a sort of shelf. And then let's maybe just do the same thing on the other side over here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And maybe on the back, let's add in like two crafting tables and maybe the same barrel design as well. And yeah, that's looking pretty nice. I actually really like that. And now the last thing that we need to add to this is, of course, some lanterns and i'm thinking this spot right here on all of these corner blocks are going to probably be the best spot maybe let's add one on top of the crafting table as well back here now let's take one final step back and take a look at our beautiful tree house we've even got the god rays coming through here god that looks nice oh actually one more thing that i think we need is like some bracing supports that actually look like it's you know holding it up instead of just kind of floating here so let's grab some stairs and some slabs uh and actually before we do this i'm going to quickly go back and get my freaking scaffolding because it's going to be an absolute pain in the ass without it. Damn it, where would I have put it? Bet you it's in one of these freaking shulkers, isn't it? Where did I put it? Oh, you're kidding me. This whole time, the scaffolding was right here. Are you serious, dude? How did I not see it? <laughs> well, cool, dude. That was an absolute waste of time. Let's go back. After returning to our treehouse, I began constructing the support pillars. They were a bit tricky to get looking right, but after settling on a design, they were all done. Okay, so there's all our supports on. I decided to just leave this like this because it kind of already looks like the tree is like supporting this side, which is pretty cool. And so now with our first treehouse officially done, it's time to start creating some more. And so I want to intertwine all of these treehouses with a nice little like kind of rope or like suspending bridge or something. So what I might do is just go down our ladder here and create a secondary platform. Okay, so this platform, isn't going to be anything too special. It's going to be a pretty small one as well. It's mainly just meant to, you know, serve the function of getting to another platform. What the hell is going on here, dude? These floating vines. How is that even possible? <laughs> and now let's make another platform at the same height on this tree here. Fuck me. Dude. Okay, and now let's attempt to make a little bit of like a suspension bridge kind of connecting these two up. Oh my god, dude. I don't know what I was trying to do there, to be honest. So I think let's add a couple of slabs here that'll allow us to place a slab there. Then let's grab out the jungle trapdoors here and maybe place two like that. Let's place some more trapdoors like that. Let's quickly hit the hay because we're sleepy, sleepy boys out here. Okay, there we go. Let's add in a another slab like that. Some more trapdoors. Wow, dude. I... I honestly can't believe I did that. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. After that epic fail, I then just, you know, went ahead and completed the rest of the bridge here. And now this gives us perfect access over to this tree as well. So what I think I'm going to do is just pretty much repeat what I've done with this tree here, where we have this platform, and then that leads us up to another tree house. So yeah, let's get started.
Okay, so there's our first two tree houses completed. We've also added in a nice little bridge that connects them up too. Now it's time to branch off to some different trees. <laughs> Get it? Branch? <laughs> My god, dude, what the f***? And yeah, it's time to create some different style tree houses over on these ones. So yeah, let's get started with those. Okay, so we're back at our first tree house here on the bottom platform. And I think we're going to next head over to this tree. So let's make our way over there. And for these next tree houses, I'm wanting to make... Oh, okay. Thankfully, I've got my hoe with me. I always keep my hoe with me nearby at all times. And yeah, so I want to make these platforms a little bit more open. I don't want to have them so enclosed. I just want these like massive platforms, maybe like a couple of stories as well. So let's maybe have these go out by four blocks. Okay, so here's our first platform. Let's also go ahead and add some trap doors along the edges of this as well. And that's just gonna add a nice little touch of detail. Let's also surround this with some fences as well. Okay, and there we go. There's our big platform created. Now let's work on the bridge that's gonna connect it up over to this side. Oh my God, dude. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> Okay, and there we go. There's our bridge completed. Uh, I know it's not perfect. It is kind of hard to make a bridge like that, but yeah. And I actually just came up with another idea, which would be kind of cool. Let's have a bridge kind of branch off this bridge and spiral down to another platform below this one. I think that would be pretty cool. Okay, gamers, and there we go. This tree is now fully completed. Instead of branching the bridge over this way, I decided to do it this way uh, for some reason. But yeah, down here, I decided to leave in this like natural bush. I felt like it was, uh, you know, a nice accent. And then I just added in a bunch of stuff as well. And now I actually have a really cool idea for our next platform. I think I want to branch off over to this one. So let's get started creating the bridge real quick here. I feel like there are way too many time lapses in this video, but uh, oh well. So yeah, after creating the bridge, we started creating the platform, and then I had another idea. Oh, actually, and I didn't even notice, there's another tree here. We can actually connect it to both of these. Why the hell not? That would look awesome, actually. And so I connected the platform up to both trees. Shocker, I know. <laughs> Okay, so now with our platform added on, what I actually want to do here is, um, yeah, I just realized I need to actually remove uh, most of what I just did. God, f oh man, I'm actually an idiot. Like, I swear, dude. Okay, there we go. There's the outline now. Next, what I want to do is just add some trap doors all the way around this just to expand our pathway out here. Uh, it'll kind of make sense in a minute. Just give me a second, okay? Okay, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, what we need to go ahead and do is head down and grab a bunch of grass. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a silk touch shovel yet, so, um... Yeah, I do have it on my pickaxe though, so uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing this. Alright, now let's go see if this is enough grass. Uh, hopefully it is. It was not. Let's go get some more. Okay, if my calculations are correct, this should be enough grass right there. There we go. Hell yeah. Now, with that done, you might be asking, what are we going to be planting here? Disruptive builds? That's so weird. I don't think I've ever actually said my, like, username in a video before. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to be planting in some bamboo. I think that's going to look kind of cool. And it's not going to be just bamboo by itself. I actually have an idea. I don't exactly know if it's going to work, but we're going to see. Okay, that should be plenty of bamboo there. Uh, okay, wow, that is uh, definitely not going to be enough bamboo. Uh, I didn't realize how expensive this actually was to make. Well, given that bamboo does grow pretty quick, so I guess it's not expensive. But uh, yeah, let's go get some more. Okay, now with a bunch of bamboo, let's go ahead and see if my idea is going to work. So we're of course just going to be planting a whole bunch of bamboo on this platform here. And I thought the idea of adding in these bamboo fences to kind of break up, you know, the repetition of the regular bamboo might look cool. You know, like thicker stalks of bamboo. We need one of these to freaking grow. There we go. Oh, it's yeah, the color is just too different, isn't it? I think we'll just leave in maybe a couple of these. Yeah, I mean, from a distance, it does look kind of cool. They're like, you know, just thicker, different kind of stalks of bamboo or something. Okay, and there we go. That's looking pretty good. Now, I think we do need a couple of lights in this bad boy. So, uh, yeah. Well, we could try adding the lanterns on top of these fences. I don't know if that would just look weird. Actually, no, I think that's going to look kind of cool, to be honest. It might, you know, maybe break the illusion that we're trying to give where these are different kinds of bamboo. But I don't know. I feel like it's just going to look cool once everything's actually grown. Yeah, I think that's going to look awesome once it actually grows in. Now, I want to go quickly back to base to get some shears so we can actually place some grass in these blank spots that I've left there. So uh, give me a second. Let's fly back right now. Actually, we don't even have to go all the way back to base. We can fly straight to the source of the iron. 
the iron farm. I don't know how we've got a couple of blokes out here, but um, oh well. Still getting plenty of iron, so that's all good with me. Let's make some shears and head back. Okay, now that we're back, let's add in some of this grass just to break up, you know, the uh, boringness. Well, not boringness, but you know, the repetition, I guess, of the bamboo. Okay, now just for some added detail, why don't we just add like a couple of little bamboo piles around the place? Maybe some barrels or chests next to those two, just to look like some storage or something. Maybe back here as well, and let's add another one, maybe over on this side here. And actually, maybe instead of a chest, let's do a barrel just to keep the variety going, you know? And hell yeah, there we go. We've got like a nice little bamboo farming platform. It's kind of cool. I don't think I've ever seen a build like this before. Uh, yeah, kind of unique and original, I guess. But yeah, this is how our treehouse is looking so far. I mean, I didn't really pick the best weather to showcase it, did I? But at least the lights kind of, uh, you know, make it stand out a bit nicer. But yeah, I think I want to branch over this way. We need to like lengthen it up a bit. So I think it's time to branch over to maybe these three or these two trees. And yeah, so let's get started. Okay, and there's our two new platforms added in with a nice like Y separated bridge. I think that's pretty cool. Now over for this one, let's add in like something like this, maybe like a big supporting pillar on the corner here. And let's do the same on the other corners as well. I also decided to leave this nice branch here just cause I think it looks nice. Definitely when you're like walking past the bridge here, just having like this leafage really close to you. I don't know, it feels cool, okay? Don't question it. Okay, now I wanna see if there's a log in here. I don't think there is. So what I wanna do, is maybe replace this leaf here with a log and then let's place a lantern on that. Hell yeah, we got a nice little hanging lantern there. That's awesome. I feel like it isn't far away enough from the ledge. Uh, oh well. <laughs> We're just gonna leave it. Okay, now for this platform, let's add in a, another couple of chests here. Then maybe let's have two sets of shelves. With the top here, let's add in a, another set of chests like that. And then maybe for the middle one, let's add in some barrels like that. That looks kind of cool. Okay, and then maybe on this side here, let's just add in another little mini bamboo farm. Maybe just in this area here. Let's slap our grass in that I just went ahead and grabbed before. And now let's just add in a bunch of our bamboo here. Oh my God, that grew quickly, what the hell? And yeah, that'll look pretty nice once that's fully grown in. Jesus, dude, settle down. This thing's freaking growing like crazy. Oh, and I think something else that might actually look nice. Maybe let's add in like a little bracing kind of support like that on the top of the leaves here. It also gives us a nice spot to maybe hang a lantern or two on as well. Okay, and now as for our second platform over here, honestly, let's just do another bamboo farm. I think we need a full one for over on this side as our other one's all the way over there. And it's just nice to have that like lushness, you know, added in everywhere. Hell yeah, that is looking awesome. That's gonna look so good when that grows in as well. All right, now I realize we're lacking in, uh, you know, the bed department. This isn't going to be much of a village without any beds to sleep in. So let's quickly head back to base and get a couple of beds. Okay, now that we have a bunch of beds, let's go find some spots to add these in. Oh, under here would definitely be a really nice spot for a couple of beds. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, maybe on the side here. Maybe two like that. Yeah, that looks nice as. Now let's just jump down to our second one over here. Maybe let's add the beds on this side this time. Let's go over to our newly created platform. Let's find a spot. Hmm. Oh, I know a cool spot. Let's add one up here. Hell yeah, that would be awesome. And maybe let's add some more under here as well. Oh yeah, this is a nice little lush spot for a bed or two. Hell yeah. Now I did manage to pick up six more eggs as well. So let's see if we can get another chicken boy here. Oh, there we go. We got one. Chicken boy V2. How's it going, man? I don't know how long he's going to stay up here for, but um, yeah. All right. And I think let's add another platform going over to this tree as well. The hell? Oh my God. That scared me. I'm like, what the hell is spinning down there? Let's go see what this guy has. It's probably pure trash. Oh, he's got slime balls. Uh, other than that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mate, you got pure trash. Except I don't know what's going on with this guy, eh? What the hell, dude? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I was about to say, uh, let's actually create a new platform over on this tree over here. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, there's our platform done and I actually just came up with a really cool idea for this one, uh, which involves me flying back to the iron farm once again. Okay, and I was thinking maybe like a water collector kind of tree would look cool. You know, a village has to have water somehow. Okay, and let's just make a quick little infinite water source here. Let's fill up all of our cauldrons here with some water, of course. And then let's see if this works. I want to remove some of the leaves above here and then I I want to quickly place in some water and then the leaves and then hopefully that's going to drip come on drip you prick <laughs> oh come on god damn it i thought that would drip through the leaves and look cool was that water in there it might have been in there oh <gasps> there it is the drips yes 
Okay, I just placed the water inside the leaf instead of above the leaf. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Jesus Christ, man. But there we go. We got the cool drips. There goes like all of the grass down below me. God damn it. But hell yeah, we've got drips dripping into our dripolator. Hell yeah, that looks so awesome. Now it looks like this is actually like, you know, collecting rain droplets through the leaves. That is so cool, dude. Now let's just add this onto every single cauldron. Hell yeah, that is awesome, dude. Look at that. Okay, and so with that, our treetop village is now fully completed. Gamers, the new 1.20 update brings with it a brand new cherry blossom biome, which I'm sure you already know about. And in this episode, we're going to be building a village in one. But first, we need to find the biome itself. Now, I have a couple of things I want to grab before we head off on our journey, with the first being some crimson wood. It pairs very nicely with the new cherry wood that we'll also be using in our block palette, so I want to bring a bunch of it with us. Jesus Christ, dude. Oh my God. Dude, I'm just here literally straight vibing. I've never been jump scared worse than that in this goddamn game, dude. I'm not even kidding. Dude, I swear, what the hell? Did they actually finally fix this bug? I had to come back just to check it out, but let's go through and look at this. Dude, the portal doesn't start waving in your face again when you come back. What? Did they actually fix this? That is insane, dude. I don't know why I'm freaking out over such a small detail, but dude, that's been in the game for so long, man. Okay, now that we have a whole crap load of this stuff, it's now time to stock up on fireworks for our journey. As you can see, I only have 38 left, and I have no idea how long it's going to take to find a cherry blossom biome. So let's head into the cave where creepers just love to seem spawning for some reason. Holy shit. Did you guys see that? And let's slaughter a bunch of them. Oh, what the hell? There's diamonds here. I didn't even see that before. Hell yeah, four diamonds. Can't go wrong with that. I haven't seen a slime down here in a long time. Ooh, this actually gives me an idea for a build, maybe in the future. Dude, I didn't even know this, but our whole massive cave area here actually goes down again into another massive cave. Dude, look at the size of this thing. Well, yeah, there's definitely nothing of value down there, so I'm not even gonna bother. Okay, now with a crap load of fireworks, uh, hopefully that's gonna be enough. All the blocks that we should need, once again, hopefully it's gonna be enough. We are now ready to start exploring and searching for the new cherry blossom biome. And of course, here's the rain right on cue to make visibility even worse. Actually, I just came up with an idea that might work. I have not done this in oh, God knows how long. I am very prepared to puke. Oh my God. Wow. I can't believe how bad this game looks by itself. That is insane. But at least it runs a whole lot better. And we should be able to run it nice and smoothly with, uh, you know, the max chunk render distance. So hopefully that aids in uh, us finding this freaking biome sooner. I mean, I've been searching for literally like maybe one minute now. You can, you can tell how impatient I'm getting already. <laughs> Oh my god, there it is! I didn't even realize! Dude, it literally took only like a couple of minutes to find it. What the hell? I was expecting it to take so much longer. Oh my god, and it looks so much better with the shaders on, dude. Jesus, remind me never to turn the shaders off ever again. <laughs> well, hell yeah, that honestly didn't even take that long. That took like only a couple minutes to find, and we pretty much just went in a straight line from our base. So it should be easy enough getting to and fro the uh, base and here, if we need to get any extra resources. And well now, with the biome found, now it's time to scout out a nice location to, uh, you know, build the village. Okay, after flying up to this vantage point here, I have decided where I want to build our cherry blossom village, and that's what's going to be right here. It's a nice, like, you know, semi-flat kind of area. I think it's going to work well, and we can spread it up to the sides if we want to, or we can even just fill in a whole bunch more cherry trees along the sides there. And we've got a nice vantage point up here to check our placement and stuff. So yeah, location found. Now it's time to start building. Or oh, actually, before we can start building, we need to harvest some cherry trees, because that's going to be our main block for the actual houses, of course. So yeah, let's start actually, you know, chopping down some of these trees. Okay, now with a couple of trees chopped down, I've gone ahead and just cleared out this area. And dude, oh my god, I swear the saplings for these trees are like increased drop rate or something. Because, dude, I think I chopped down maybe like six or seven trees and we have literally 50 saplings. And I also planted all of these everywhere as well. I don't know if that's bugged or I'm just like, you know, losing my mind. But that's kind of crazy. Like, oh my god, dude, look at all of it over here as well. Well, at least we don't have to worry about saplings, thankfully. But yeah, so like I was saying, we cleared this area here to, of course, start building our first house. And so this one is going 
going to be our most basic and simple one. So yeah, let's get started. So this one's going to be a simple five by five house here. Uh, that's not five by five. There we go. That's how it should be. And I will just say while I'm building this, my good friend and expert builder, Extra Builds, actually helped me come up with the designs for these bases. So yeah, credit goes to him as well. All right, so there's the pillars added in. And now let's add in our front wall design here, which is going to consist of some more logs. And we're actually going to be stripping these. And oh yeah, that is a nice block, dude. That looks so good. Let's go ahead and slap an upside down stair block there. And we actually need to go ahead and also craft a door. And let's slap that on there. Now as for the roof, it's going to be this layer here. And we're actually going to be using our crimson wood for the trim of these roofs. Okay, so there's the roof done. And for this build, we're actually going to be needing a special block. Yeah, so we're going to be using pink stained glass panes for this, which is going to look pretty nice, uh, hopefully. So let's chuck in the rest of our blocks here. And then up here, we're also going to place some upside down stairs like so. Let's also go ahead and strip those. And there we go. There's our front wall done. Looking pretty nice. I think we also will go ahead and hang some lanterns on the corners of all of these uh, trims here for the roof. And now let's go ahead and add in all of our walls. And hell yeah, there we go. There's the exterior for our first little base pretty much done. Now let's quickly head onto the inside and just add in a cute, quick little interior here. Let's just add in a nice floor. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have any wool for some beds. Let's see if we can shear any of the uh, local wildlife. Okay, there we go. We've got a couple of beds now. Let's head back to our interior. Maybe let's add the bed right in the middle here. Then beside it, let's place a furnace and then a chest. Maybe on top of the furnace, let's add in a lantern as well. And yeah, there's nothing really too much that we can do on the interior here because it is so small. So we're probably just going to leave it at that. And yeah, there we go. There's our first most basic house completed. Okay, and now with a bunch more trees chopped down and a whole bunch more wood. Oh, it's actually, yeah, really not that much. It's time to start building our next house design. And I will just quickly say, the more that we harvest these trees, the more, you know, saplings I'm going to replant. And yeah, this whole biome should start looking a whole lot nicer the more trees that we chop down. Because I'm going to make it, you know, a bit more of a dense forest. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about the vanilla cherry biome forest. Because, I don't know, it just feels too sparse. Like, the trees are just too far apart. I don't know if that's, like, you know, accurate to the real life, you know, ver variant of this tree. I don't know, dude. But yeah, so I'm just going to slowly carve the biome into something that I like, which is, you know, a bit more of a densely populated forest. Okay, now let's actually get started on our next house design, which I think I might put maybe right here. Let's clear out all of this grass here to make it a little bit flatter, because this house is going to be a little bit longer than that one as well. So we need a little bit more of an area. Actually, just before I start, I completely forgot about this extra little detail that I was meant to add around the leaves here, just to make them feel like they're a little bit more contained. And hell yeah, that's looking so much nicer, dude. Look at that. Just look at it. Okay, now it's time to actually start our next house. So let's start off, of course, with the pillars here. Actually, I think I'm going to shift this over a little bit like that. There we go. Let's raise these bad boys up. And I may as well slap the roof on here as well while we're at it. Okay, there's our roof done. We also added in this nice little section here, which we'll actually be doing something kind of cool with once we've gotten the walls done. Uh, speaking of which, uh, let's build them. Okay, and there's all of the exterior done, except for a couple of little details that I want to add. The first one of which we're going to need to find some iron for. So yeah, give me a second. Oh, there we go. There's some iron. Hell yeah. Okay, let's go grab that, smelt it up, and I'll be back. Okay, there we go. There's our hanging signs created. And so we're actually going to head up here and place this right in this spot here. Uh, what should we name this? Like, humble abode. Oh my god, dude, they're so small. You can't really fit a lot of text on there, mate. And something cool is you can actually put stuff on top of the... Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> forgot you can edit them. Yeah, you can actually put stuff on top of them like a lantern, if I can place it. There we go. And yeah, how cool does that look? We got a nice little lantern on top of our sign there. That is so cool. Okay, now as for the interior, let's once again just replace all of the floor here with some slabs. On this wall here, let's add our bed in and then maybe let's put a chest and a barrel beside that. And let's chuck our lantern on top of that barrel as well. And then maybe over here on this side, let's place in a furnace. I think I want to get a couple more. So let's go find some uh, readily available stone over here. Okay, now that we have a couple of furnaces. Let's go ahead and uh, place these in here. 
I think three is uh, a decent amount there. And yeah, there we go. There's our pretty simple interior done. I mean, I'm not going to go too crazy with the interiors because we're literally probably never going to be seeing these again. But uh, yeah, there we go. All done. Now with our two houses created, let's actually start making the pathway for our village. And so this pathway is actually going to be a little bit different. I was inspired by the flowers here. And so we're actually going to be using these flowers to line our pathway. And let's just do a first little test in between these two houses because I don't know how it's actually going to look. I think it would look nice with some coarse dirt in there as well. I might end up actually finding some gravel nearby and uh, just making some coarse dirt out of that. But yeah, that's the basic idea behind our pathway. Okay, there we go. There's our path actually done. I actually just went ahead and grabbed some gravel from a nearby cave to make the coarse dirt. And yeah, I actually think this pathway looks a whole lot better than just simply grass. But yeah, now with our pathway done, it's time to start building our next house design. And I've basically run out of wood again. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and just harvest a bunch more trees. So yeah, just give me a second and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, gamers, we're back with a bunch more wood and it's now time to start building our next house, which I actually think I wanna build up here. So I'm gonna quickly remove all of these uh, saplings that I've planted before they actually grow into trees because yeah I feel like this is going to be a nice spot up here for this base or house I should say so yeah let's flatten off this area real quick okay and let's start off by of course placing the pillars And after placing in all of the pillars, it was on to adding in all the wall designs. I mean, they're pretty much the same as all the other houses. We also got the roof added on, this one having two separate roofs, which I really love the look of. Okay, and there we go. There's the exterior of the house fully completed. I accidentally made this uh, top area one block too tall, but uh, yeah, we're just not going to talk about it. And so the final little addition here is just slapping on another hanging sign onto this block here. What should we call this one? I don't know, maybe DB's Shack. Hell yeah, that looks nice. Now, once again, as for the interior, let's of course just go ahead and clear out the floor here, replace it with some slabs. Now let's chuck our bed in right here. Beside that, let's place a crafting table, maybe a chest as well. And then over on this side, Let's just place in our three furnaces with maybe a chest beside that and a lantern there too. Oh, and I almost forgot we need to put our lantern on this block of the house here. I don't know what made me remember that, but uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, and that one as well. What the hell? How did I miss that too? Jesus Christ, man. Bang. There we go. Okay. So there's our third house all done. But you know, I've kind of showed you all the different house designs here. So now I think I'm going to go ahead and just do a time lapse for the rest of all of the houses that we're going to add in. Honestly, don't know how far we're going to go, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So yeah, let's get started with the time lapse right now. Okay, gamers, and there's our town coming along nicely so far. Now it's time to add in a few little details that I want to add in. Starting off over here at this nice little spot right here, I want to add in a little bit of a pond design. So let's get started. Firstly, I'm going to make a quick little infinite water source right here. Then I actually want to go ahead and remove all of the bottom blocks here and replace them with some sand because I feel like that's going to look like a nice kind of like ground for our pond. I don't know. It might end up looking weird, but we'll see. Okay, and I feel like we need a little secondary, like, kind of dip down into the pond here. So let's do maybe that, maybe a little bigger. Yeah, that looks nice. Now let's start filling it up with some water. All right, and there we go. There's our pond filled up with water. Now it's time to start adding in a couple of little decorations, uh, of which I need to grab another one. Just give me a second here. Of course, and it starts raining. It looks like it's time for another building in the rain with disruptive segment. That's right, at least it fits the theme of the build, you know? Rain and water equals the same, you know? All right, so the first detail we're gonna add around here is just a couple of stone slabs, just for some nice extra little uh, detail, I guess. Now I have some seagrass as well. Let's just scatter those around, kind of in like clumps, maybe along the edge. I feel like that'll look nice. Maybe in the middle here as well. Let's actually bone mill maybe two pieces because it definitely looks nice having them, you know, like touching the surface. I would love to have lily pads, but I have no idea where a swamp is. Uh, so yeah, that's okay. And now let's just add some sugar cane 
lines around this as well, just kind of evenly spaced apart. And yeah, I think that looks good. And now for the final touch, let's add some flowers around all of this as well, just kind of broken up. Oh, also that reminds me, I feel like I should probably mention this, but I decided to change the pathway. Instead of making it, you know, just solid flowers literally along all of the sides, which I didn't really like the look of that very much, I decided to actually break it up and make the flowers a little bit more like kind of scattered and randomly placed. I feel like that looks a lot nicer instead of just, you know, a freaking load of flowers everywhere, man. So I'm gonna do kind of the same thing with the pond here. And I also wanna have a pathway that leads into our pond, maybe like to this area of it. So let's actually start adding that in real quick right now. Okay, maybe not the whole pond because it's gonna kind of link up to this pathway and just kind of look weird. So I just kind of ended it off over there. Oh, and actually I just came up with a really neat idea for an extra little detail, which I think will look nice. I need a couple of grass blocks. So uh, yeah, let's grab those. Now in the middle right here, let's create another little island like this. Just something super small like that. And then let's actually go ahead and make a tiny little custom tree here. I think this is gonna look pretty cool. Okay, so there's our branches, pretty small. And here's a handy dandy pro tip as well. Whenever you're building like a custom tree like this, the easiest way to make it look nice is pretty much just cover every single face of the branch here with some leaves. That's like my hidden tactic for building any kind of custom tree, the easiest way possible. Literally just cover every single exposed face of the branches and then you're pretty much golden, mate. Okay, and that is looking pretty good, but I think it's a little bit too bushy. So I think I'm going to remove some of these bottom ones like this, and that'll also allow us to hang a lantern underneath that too. Maybe let's add one on this side as well. Actually, mm, I think that's too many. Let's get rid of that one. And hell yeah, that's looking awesome. We got a nice custom little cherry blossom tree in here. Now, another thing I want to add real quick is just like a custom small little bench at the end of this pathway. Let's just grab some signs and add those on here too. Actually, I think this will look better if it's actually like, you know, facing the pond instead of the pathway. <laughs> hell yeah, that's awesome. Oh, and this just gave me another little little idea as well. Let's actually add in a very small dock here. Let's actually have this final one be like that. And so it dips down into the water. Yeah, I think that looks better. All right, well, we can actually use these fences to just add some quick little lamp posts around the sides of this as well. Just to brighten up the area, I think it's going to look quite nice. And let's add one over here beside the bench too. Hell yeah. Now we have a nice little kind of town center area, which looks really nice. Okay, and for the next detail, I want to add some little market stalls up here in this blank area. So let's maybe start off with a actual market stall over on this side here. Uh, let's actually make that a little bit smaller. We're going to add a bit of a table in here. Then let's have some fences that come up and we'll add some more fences on the back here as well. Then let's jump up here and add on some stairs like this. Let's maybe have slabs in between those and then more stairs on top of here. And then let's maybe do that and leave like a little gap in the roof. Does that look weird? Let's see. Yeah, it kind of does actually. And I think we need to get our trim block in there as well. Our same block that we used. The uh, crimson wood. That's what it's called. So let me go grab some of that. Okay, let's replace this with our crimson wood and see how it looks. All right, let's take a step back once again, and uh, wow, it looks somehow worse. Wow. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay, that's better, but it's still kind of looking weird. Why does it look so weird, guys? Tell me now, please help me. <laughs> okay, let's try replacing these fences with some logs. Oh my god, even just everything I do is making it worse, man. What the hell is happening? Man, okay, let's try the <laughs> let's try the leaves with the old roof design. Oh my god, this is frustrating me. Man, that just does not work. What is going on? Okay, there we go. There's the design that I ended up settling on here. So I ended up stripping all of this wood and changing all of this back just to the regular cherry wood, just because the colors were clashing a little bit too much. And I also added the leaves back in here as well. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and repeat that design maybe over here. I don't think I want to have too many of these. And I think I want to mainly have like these tables. Let's uh, add in a design just for reference. Just like that and let's connect them up with some slabs and then we'll add some little decorations on top of there of which I uh, of course do not have any. So we're going to have to go probably mine some clay. I might actually go do that uh, real quick right now. Okay, now we're back with some decorative blocks. Let's go ahead and start adding in some stuff here. Let's start off with a cherry sapling inside of a pot. And then beside that, let's place an extinguished campfire. Now over here on this table, let's maybe add in a couple of pot plants. This time, let's change it up. Let's maybe chuck an azure blue in that one and an oxide daisy over here. Let's actually remove this block here and replace it with a barrel. And let's chuck a lantern on top of that as well. That's gonna look nice. Now over here in this little gap, let's add in a little bit of a barrel kind of like storage pile thing. Yeah, that looks nice. Though I think it 
needs an extra chest, maybe there. Yeah. Okay. And a campfire. Let's chuck another. <laughs> let's chuck another campfire there. Okay. That's looking good. Now let's just add similar things like that into a couple of other strategically placed locations, like maybe over here. Let's just add something super simple like that. And let's also actually branch off our pathway here and add one in to all of the market here. So let's branch it off over here and maybe bring it over this way. And let's also just add in a little bit of some light flowering around this area as well. And yeah, that's looking nice. Let's maybe add in a little bit of a lamp post here as well. So let's actually do this and strip that. Up here, let's add in a slab and then some trap doors coming away from those. And then let's add some lanterns on top of that. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. Oh, actually I completely forgot to add a detail onto here as well. Let's add our last flower pot here with an oxide daisy inside. Hell yeah. And then around this, I think I want to add in some flowers like that. I think that looks pretty nice. Now I feel like we just have too many flowers around the place here. Let's maybe cut down on the flowerage a little bit. All right. And so there we go. That pretty much does it for the entire village and this episode. Gamers, I'm most- Oh my Jesus Christ, dude. Get away from me, you little gremlin. Ah. <sighs> Gamers, I'm most known for my underground base designs. I mean, I've made what, like 10 tutorials at this point? J just shut up, I like them, okay? So today, I'm gonna create a brand new secret underground base design with a trading hall, massive storage areas, a secret entrance, and more. Let's get started. All right, so first up, I need to figure out the location for this base. And I was thinking, I kind of want it to be an extension of my main base here, so why not just make it directly under this? And so that means I'll need to find a secret entrance spot to, uh, you know, get down into the base. So let's hunt around around for a couple of potential spots. Now we could do something here, like maybe like it reveals like a whole big staircase down, but I honestly, I have no idea how to do something that complex. So maybe over here in this spot, we could maybe make some of these get pulled back by pistons and maybe it like reveals a ladder down there or something. That'd be kind of cool. So yeah, I think we're gonna make probably this spot right here as our secret entrance. So let's actually make a couple of sticky pistons real quick. While I'm making those pistons, I just wanted to quickly mention my wife has now started a YouTube channel. Go show her some support link is in the description. All right, back to the video. Now let's actually go ahead and just remove some of these blocks here and see what we're working with. Oh, actually, so our pistons are gonna have to be on this block. So what we might have to do is actually maybe cover up this block as well, because this is gonna be a piston right here. So let's actually maybe grab another composter real quick. Now, I know we don't really need to make any of this hidden. Uh, I just kind of like doing it. I do like making redstone stuff from scratch. I find it to be, you know, pretty fun. So, you know, why the hell not? Okay, now with our repeat, and our torch. Let's go ahead and place a block here. And oh, actually, what if we do this instead? Let's do that and see that should power both of them. Yes, it does. Awesome. Now we just need to figure out a way to toggle these pistons on and off. That isn't like the most obvious thing, you know, like a button just out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, actually, I just had an idea. Let's try this, actually. Let's grab some trap doors and let's make a lever as well. Okay, let's go ahead and replace these blocks here. Oops, Jesus. Okay, I did not mean to destroy that. Let's replace place the ground blocks here with some trap doors. So it kind of just looks like normal ground. We'll go ahead and actually replace this side as well, just so it matches. And so in here, we'll actually be able to access our lever so that we can toggle the pistons on and off. I think that'll work nicely. And hell yeah. So that works perfectly. So we just flick this lever to turn it on or to turn it off rather. So now it's back in its normal position. And then we flick the lever again and it opens it up and we'll have a ladder that leads down here into our secret base. Hell yeah. All right, so let's grab a bunch of ladders and start adding them in here so that we can actually get down. And what I think I might do as well is actually reveal some blocks here so that we can access the lever from this side and close it back up if we wanted to. And I uh, need to figure out where the lever is. Okay, and of course it was on the block I just destroyed and I messed everything up. That is awesome, dude. <sighs> place that back on there and let's get our lever back as well. Now, once we come down the ladder, we can just easily come over here and close it back up behind us. Even though, you know, no one's in this world to come down and follow me, but uh, it's the thought that counts, you know? <laughs> All right, so yeah, now let's keep going down with our ladder. I don't know exactly how far down I want to go with this. And yeah, that seems good. And so now it is time to start excavating a massive area that we'll need for the base, of course. So yeah, roll the time lapse. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, gamers, I've just gone ahead and grabbed a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to be using to fill up all of our newly excavated interior here. And so first up, I actually want to grab these spruce trap doors and start removing these blocks here and actually replacing them with some spruce trap doors. Now, unfortunately, you can't do this on bedrock, which kind of sucks, but uh, I'm going to be utilizing it because I'm on the absolute Chad Java version here. And hell yeah, that's just like a nice looking ladder. It also takes up a little less room as well. And yeah, so now it is time to start with one of our rooms. And I think I want to start with the uh, the loot or the treasure room, which is where all of these blocks are going to come into play. So let's start off by grabbing out some of our spruce logs here. And I will just say, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to lay out any of this because I haven't done any pre-planning whatsoever. Usually I would do a little bit of pre-planning and just have a general idea of what I want to do. But uh, yeah, that is not the case here today. Okay, so yeah, starting off, we're going to be placing all of these pillars around everywhere. This is just something that I love doing in pretty much all of my underground bases as it's a really nice and easy way to kind of lay out things. We're also going to place in this nice little arch design as well in between our uh, pillars here just to link them together. We also need to figure out how we want to do our lights. I do have a couple of shroom lights that I got uh, from the previous episode and I think something that could be cool is just placing them in the middle of the room here in the ceiling like this and I think to make them look nicer I'm going to quickly head back up and grab some stone real quick. Okay and I just went ahead and made some stone stairs and I'm going to try adding these in on kind of the ends like this. Maybe let's also expose these sides and do the same and maybe even the corners too. Let's see how that looks. And yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. I kind of like that design. Let's go ahead and just add this to the other light as well. And hell yeah, that looks pretty cool. It just exposes more of the light and it looks kind of cool. Okay, so now let's grab some of our detailing blocks here. So starting off right here at the back, let's place in three stairs like this. Let's actually make these end ones kind of curved so they, uh, you know, look like that. Let's grab some of our armor stands and place those in. And now I just want to grab some of our random pieces of armor. Oh, okay, that did not do what I wanted it to do. There we go. Let's just place some of those on randomly like that, and that pretty much does it for all of our enchanted armor that we had. Next, I think in these sections to the sides here, let's just place in some chests like this. Let's do the same on this side as well. And yeah, so let's uh, place some item frames on the front of all of these chests and put some of these into them. And yeah, now in these ones, let's maybe just add in some of our blocks that we have here. Let's go with maybe a couple of iron blocks. Let's go with some gold ones, maybe a diamond one up here, and let's chuck two emerald ones in there too. And then I actually saved these ones because I think maybe let's add some over here next to our armor stands. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I actually like that. That's all right. I feel like wow, we need a helmet. We need one of those to have a helmet. Let's just go enchant one real quick. And yeah, let's just chuck that on the middle one there. That looks pretty nice. And yeah, so there we go. That's our kind of loot room. I think what I want to do now is actually add a checkered pattern into the floor of this whole place, probably just to kind of be like a pathway that kind of lines the place. I think it'll look nice. Okay, and there we go. There's our checkered floor added in. I think that looks pretty nice. And it also kind of renders the fact that I spent like 20 minutes freaking getting all of this carpet. I don't know why I thought I was going to use carpet, but uh, yeah, oh well. And yeah, so there we go. That pretty much marks our loot room all done. I think it looks pretty nice. We've got like the blocks that kind of showcase our worth, you know, and then we have our armor showcase as well. And I will just say this loot room was inspired by a loot room created by Extra Builds in his survival world. I thought it looked pretty nice and it inspired me to make this whole video actually. Okay, now for the next section, let's start working on our massive uh, storage area. So once again, we're going to add in the same pillar design to keep the design consistent across all of the uh, different areas of the base here. What the hell? Did you see it? There's a man in my house. Get out of here, mate. Get out. Get out. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, settle down. Okay, and so yeah, for this area, we're actually going to have to excavate a couple more blocks in here for each section, as we're of course going to be adding in a bunch of chests. Now, I don't really have a use for any of these uh, chests, you know, I haven't even used like half of the ones that are upstairs. Uh, but you know, when the time comes, we'll have the extra storage readily available. All right, and there we go. Then we'll just go ahead and slap our uh, top little design on here. And yeah, so I'm pretty much just going to repeat this exact thing in every single section. All right, and there we go. There's all of our chests added in and that leads us to the back wall here of which I want to add in my signature leaf design. Um, oh wow. Just give me a second. Let's improve this real quick. There we go. Much better. Oh, actually I just realized this isn't going to work. I wanted to add a table here, but this is going to be too close to the table so that we can't actually place things on it because I want to add this surrounding, you know, design that I always do. So, hmm, we need to figure something else out. Oh, and I actually just got a pretty cool idea. Let's grab out the shears so that we can remove these and actually go craft 
something real quick that should uh, work. We're gonna grab two of these bad boys, place them in the corners here, and then let's place the oak leaves like this, and that way it kind of looks like some house plants. Hell yeah, that's kind of cool. Now, as for our table, let's actually mimic the same one that we did over here. And then on here, I just wanna go ahead and add on a bunch of flower pots and some flowers in all of those, of course. Although I feel like it's lacking up here. We definitely need something up here. Let's maybe try adding in some barrels like that. And then let's also place spruce slab like that. And then some spruce trap doors coming away from that. And hell yeah, that looks awesome. I love the way that looks. Nice and lush. Kind of looks like a little mini like greenhouse kind of area even. But yeah, there we go. There's our storage wing of the uh, secret underground base all done. All right, so once again, turning to the left to our third section, we're going to be adding in a villager trading hall in this one. Because I have not really set up anything like that yet in my area and it would definitely be very helpful. So let's just kind of lay in a bit of a framework here for the trading uh, kind of stalls, I guess. And we might even be able to make this two stories high if we needed to. But I think I'll just leave it as one story for now and we'll make it two stories in the future if we need to. So yeah, let's uh, dig these out each in by one block like this so that the, uh, you know, the villagers can actually sit in there. And then for now, I think a nice design for the top area is placing in some stairs like this. And then let's place some more logs up here and actually strip all of those. I think that's a nice little design to add in. Let's also go ahead and add in our light designs. Oh my god, dude, that scared the crap out of me. Why do I, I... Dude, I swear I get jump scared in every single one of these videos I make. Like, oh my god, and there's more spawning. I don't know why, that just gave me goosebumps, dude. Why do I keep getting goosebumps so much? Like, this game isn't even supposed to be scary, and I'm out here getting scared. Like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a full-grown man, and I'm getting scared in, like, a literal children's video game, dude. What is wrong with me? Okay, there's our lights added in. You might be able to hear my cat meowing in the background, but, uh, you know, should be right. <laughs> and yeah, so now this is pretty much ready to bring all of our villagers down that we want, and we can just block them in by placing their job site block right here and then we'll be able to trade with each one of those i think i'll go ahead and probably do that as a time lapse at the end of this video just because uh you know i'm in a building mood i don't feel like carting villages at the moment and i just want to get our last section done and also these corner areas as well i don't know what i'm going to do in these probably just something decorative but uh you know i'll figure that out and yeah so now moving on to our final section over here let's once again of course add in our pillar designs and i think for this side what i have in mind is actually just doing these corner pillars like this because i want to actually actually just add in a giant smelting area over here. Just something like this. And I feel like just having that open like this will look pretty nice. So now let's add in a supporting shelf design under these. We'll just alternate between slabs and trap doors like so. And then we'll of course need to add in a whole bunch of decorative things on top of all of these furnaces. So let's just place in a couple of pots like that. And I think even a nice detail to add to here would be a stone button on top of that. Oh, not there, what the hell? On top of the furnace there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dude, this cat, I swear to God. Look, guys, okay? I'll let him in right now. I'm gonna record it as well on my phone. Just give me a second. All right, guys, here we are. Peep this setup, boys, okay? We've got the triple wide monitor set up here. We've got my professional layout for the base that we're currently making. You see, we got the loot room, the chest, the trading hall, and the crafting and smelting area. I know this just turned into a whole setup tour now. But yeah, we've got the main monitor right here, and then the Discord. I'm probably gonna have to blur that because, um, yeah, I don't wanna leak stuff. Okay, over here, we've got the mic setup. This thing's pretty good. Very expensive, I, must add, I might add. Over here, we've got the crusty headphones that are, uh, you know, peeling. It's just the way it is. We've got the empty bottle of milk for the baby. We've got the tissues, okay? They said I was jerking off with this. That's not the case, okay? And they actually thought that this was lotion, but it's actually hand sanitizer, so shut up. And uh, yeah, it is very messy. Don't judge me, okay? Also back here, we've got our, uh, you know, sound dampening foam. We've got curtains as well to make the audio even better. There we go. I can kind of zoom out there so you can see the scale of the curtains. Let's uh, open this bad boy up. We've got my absolutely goated plaque here, okay? And then the cat should should still be here, let's see. Yep, there he is. Hey, big kitty, how's it going? Now see, I'll let him in, and if I close this door and go back to recording, He'll want to go straight back out. I'm just going to sit here and wait for that to happen, okay? Okay, we're back. And I completely forgot what I was doing. I think I was adding lights in. Yes. Yep, and there he is. I don't know if you can hear him, but he already wants to go back out. Oh my god. He is at the door right now. I'm going to let him back out. God damn it, man, this cat. And I just opened the door, and then he comes back in. I swear to... He... <sighs> 
cats, man. I just I don't understand them sometimes. You know how it is. Okay, there's our lights added in. Let's go ahead and start adding in our crafting stuff over on this side. So firstly, I think I'm gonna want to add some barrels in the tops here. It's a nice way to take up space. And then down below, I think I want to add in, you know, our crafting blocks, of which I don't really have many of. So let's grab a crafting table over here. Beside that, maybe let's place in a grindstone and face it the right way. And I think a stone cutter beside that is going to look pretty nice. So let's go up and make one of those real quick. Okay, there we go. There's our stone cutter. Let's whack that in. Hell yeah. Now let's also add in a bit of a supporting shelf here. I think I might actually make it closely match the one over there just so it matches. And now in here, I want to add in a uh, bit of a, what is it? Brewing area. That's it. So let's place in our table designs first of which we're going to have to do something like that. There we go. Now, unfortunately, I only have one brewing stand. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got more. I just don't know where they are. They're in something somewhere in here, like probably in my other base or something. I don't know. I'll find the other one and put it in here later. Don't even worry about it. I mean, let's be real. I'm going to forget. And now, instead of putting a cauldron, which are like a lot of people do for some reason, uh, we're instead just going to put in a water source like this. That way it never runs out. It doesn't look as good, but you know, at least it's more functional. Okay, and now for the back area here, I think I want to do something kind of like that, but something different. And killing that enderman before actually just gave me an idea. Okay, and here's my idea. We're going to place in a grass block with an azalea on it. Okay, <laughs> hell yeah. And now just for some more decorations for this area, I think maybe some cherry leaves up here could look kind of nice. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> oh, they even make this little effect, dude. I didn't even know that. What the hell? That's so cool. Now, I don't actually know what I want to do in these other areas. I think probably the logical idea is just to place some more grass blocks with some flowers and stuff. So let's go back up to the surface and get a couple more grass blocks. Okay, let's add those in here. Let's also cover up the exposed little dirt part of the uh, grass block here with some trap doors just to make it look a little nicer. And then let's grab our grass pieces here just to add those in. And then a cornflower and a dandelion over there. Although I think a little bit of just some extra stuff is needed here just to make it look a little less bland like a lantern there. Maybe behind it, let's add in a textured pattern of stone bricks. And yeah, just that simple checkered pattern of stone bricks makes it look a little bit more interesting. And I think this area looks pretty nice now. And as for this, this area, I think we need another pot plant on top of that crafting table. Let's chuck that in and add in a dandelion to that. And then let's also add another checkered pattern behind here and also over here as well, just because I feel like it needs it. And hell yeah, there we go. We're now done with our four main sections of the base. Well, except for this one. Um, yeah, once again, we'll get to that at the end of the video. And now it's just time for these corner areas over here, of which I think I'm going to first add in a pillar like this, and that'll allow us just to place some things beside that. Then I think maybe on this side here, let's place a jukebox here. We can play our one disc that we have that is... Yeah, this crap. God damn it, man. Oh, what the hell? Since when do jukeboxes, like, you know, make this little animation? What the hell? That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's stop playing that. <laughs> Let's maybe make a, another chest real quick so that we can store our uh, music discs. Hopefully, we do get more of those in the future. And now, maybe on this side here, let's just add in a little table design like that. And I think something that's going to look really nice is just adding leaves in the tops of all of these areas. And I think oak leaves is going to look the best, which means I need to go get some because I have none. So, give me a second and I'll be right back. Okay, now I do need some more pot plants for this part. So I just went ahead and got some clay here and I'm just going to smelt this up real quick over here. Now, while we're waiting for that, we might as well just start on our next areas. Ooh, also, I forgot. I got the oak leaves. Let's add those in to every section. I think that's going to look pretty nice. Oh my God. Of course, we are for short. God damn it, man. <laughs> And there we go. Okay. Now for our next area over here, let's go ahead and replace these four blocks here with some grass blocks. Then let's grab our water buckets. Damn it, I forgot I used the other one. Okay, let's go back up and get some freaking water. Where is my nearest water source, you little shit? You little f***er. You f***ing little bastard. Okay, let's just make a quick and dirty uh, infinite little water source over here. And then behind here, let's actually place in some water. And that will allow us to place some sugar cane on these blocks. And these will grow up and just perfectly cover up this entire wall. And I think that's going to look pretty cool. Now in the opposite corner, we're going to do a pretty similar thing. So let's replace these blocks here with some more grass blocks, wherever they have gone. There they are. This time we won't be needing any water because we're going to be planting some bamboo there instead. Yes, that's going to look cool. And now as for our final little corner 
over here, I think we'll just do another simple little table design like this. And then we'll just put some random stuff on there. Maybe like some extinguished campfires. Let's do one there. Now let's uh, grab out some of our bricks here and actually make some more pot plants. Now let's just place in some random flower pots everywhere. Hell yeah, that looks nice. And now the last thing that I think we need in here is just some more lights in this area just to brighten everything up a little more. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly add those in right now. Okay, and there we go. There's all of our lights added in. Hell yeah, that looks awesome, dude. And yeah, so there we go. That pretty much does it for everything down here that I wanted to add in. Of course, except for our villages, which I think I'll just go ahead and uh, bring them all down here right now. Okay, so what I've actually gone ahead and done is just gotten two villages from our existing village up over there. And I've just brought them down here and kind of enclosed them in this area. And so I'm just going to chuck a bunch of beds down in here so that they can breed. And I will eventually just, you know, sort them out and put them into their things. So yeah, don't worry about that. I'll get that done. Probably just in my own time because, you know, it's probably the most boring thing you could ever watch. Gamers! Living on an island is one of the most luxurious things you can do. It means you have a house, lots of money and time, all of which I don't have. So let's pretend we do by transforming our very own island in Minecraft. Now, gamers, you'll be delighted to hear that I'm trying a completely different theme of building for this video. I do have a tiny bit of experience with this theme, but it will still pose quite the challenge, which should make things uh, interesting. But that also means we need some different kinds of blocks to build with, sandstone and bricks. So let's get harvesting. Okay, and now with all of our stuff finally obtained in these shulker boxes here, I uh, also just grabbed a bunch of dirt just in case if I need to uh, expand the island or anything like that. I've also repaired some of my tools and, you know, we got the fireworks, we got everything we should hopefully need to find a suitable island to build on and transform. So, yeah, it is time to take to the skies and find the perfect island. Let's get started. Okay, I think this one is it. This one looks perfect. It's a pretty decent size. I should be able to fit the uh, quite large build that I want to put on this bad boy. So yeah, I think location has been found. Hell yeah. All right, and so now it is time to terraform the island and shape it up a little bit. We're also going to have to uh, trim back a bunch of these trees. So yeah, let's get started doing that right now. After trimming away all those trees, I then flattened and prepared the area for our build. And then I just dived right into building. So right now I'm laying out all of the pillars first, and you might be able to tell that this will be a bit of a complex build. And then I started raising up all of the pillars and adding our wall designs in between some of those as well. Next it was on to adding in the side roof designs, which is where the bricks come in. And I also added in a central balcony to break up the roofs a bit. Heading up a bit higher, I added in some more pillars and created the topmost roof. And finally, I added in the rest of the roof around the back of the build and also added some finishing touches like buttons and archway designs. Okay, and there we go. That pretty much marks the completion of the exterior of the house. Obviously, we do have the interior to work on, but I'm going to get back to this a little bit later because I want to start creating, uh, you know, the rest of the stuff for the island. The first thing of which is going to be kind of like a supporting wall that's going to run like maybe along this way. I'm not exactly sure how I want to lay it out, but... But uh, yeah, we're pretty much just gonna figure it out. So yeah, I'm thinking we uh, just extend the dirt out like this. And so along the sides here, we'll have like these pillars. We'll repeat a similar kind of archway design that we've employed there, like that maybe. Or actually we might even do that a little bit lower so that we can cover up the dirt. So the inside of all the dirt here, I think might be sandstone. I think that's gonna look pretty nice. And then above that, let's put some more cut sandstone. And then I'll probably put spruce fences and fence gates in between that. I think that'll look pretty nice. And then yeah, so I'm thinking all of this dirt is actually going to be sandstone. So yeah, we'll probably start the dock actually here and we'll just continue it out this way. Maybe like out one more like that. And then for the end here, let's just add in some more pillars like this. I'll have it nice and wide like that. That's pretty nice. And then yeah, we'll raise all of that up to be the same height there. And then we'll continue the wall over down this way. And we'll maybe even add in a staircase. And uh, yeah, so once again, I'm going to do that as a time lapse right now. So firstly, I raised everything up to the correct height. And you might be able to tell what I'm going for here, which is like a a Spanish style harbor kind of thing. I then extended the pillars and walls off to the right just behind the little beach thing we've got going on here and I also expanded that beach a little bit as well. 
And then it was on to adding in details like lanterns and fences and fence gates. Now heading on to this area over here, I cleared out the area and replaced the ground with stone, and yeah, I have no idea what I'm gonna do here to be honest. And finally I added some finishing details everywhere like barrels and chests. Okay, and there we go, there's a lot of the exterior done, and actually taking a look at this from over here, this looks awesome dude. I don't know about you guys, but this looks really good. Like, it's been a while since I've built in like a completely different style, and I'm very glad I have done that, because yeah, it looks awesome. So yeah, we added in this massive like harbour kind of style thing, where it's like supporting the island or whatever. Also went ahead and added in a bunch of these decorations everywhere in these little archways. It just looks really nice having like, you know, barrels and logs and stuff in there. Just adds a little bit of liveliness. But yeah, I do have a bunch of ideas for some other things that I want to add to this island, uh, and yeah, we're gonna have to go back to base to grab some items, so yeah, let's quickly head back to base. Oh, someday will something, something, I don't know the words to the song. <laughs> God damn it, yeah, boys out of jungle wood. We're gonna have to go get some jungle wood. Alright gamers, now that we're back at the island, I think what I want to go ahead and do next is uh, probably just clear out all of the trees and crap from this area and uh, turn this into a nice crop farm. So yeah, let's once again begin removing a whole bunch of trees. Well, right on cue, just as I get started uh, planning to do a time lapse, here's the rain to uh, make visibility a hundred times worse. We'll probably just do one of those time lapses where I'm, you know, cutting between chopping down different trees. You know what I'm saying? Oh my, you f***ing piece of shit. F***ing man, you're a f***ing little f***. Alright, now with our area cleared out, let's go ahead and add a pathway that will run through our fields over this way. And so, I think I want this to maybe stem from this path here, I think that'll look pretty nice. Alright, so let's start our path here, we're gonna have slabs that come down, and we'll have our, like, pathway, uh, maybe, let's actually bring this around, and we'll make that into sandstone. Just like that, that's pretty good. And yeah, now we're pretty much just going to continue this path, uh, maybe over to the right this way, and then we'll come down here and probably end it somewhere over there. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna, just gonna do that real quick right now. All right, and there's the pathway added in. Just, uh, you know, a super simple pathway. Nothing too crazy going on here. And yeah, now I'm pretty much just going to fill up all of the sides here with some crops. So yeah, let's do that right now as well. Oh my god, what is that? Brother, is that an invisible spider? Dude, I remember this from like one of my other videos. What the hell is that? Dude, what the f***? That is so weird. All right, and there's our big sprawling crop farm added in, and now I want to go ahead and just add in a few little details like some barrels and composters around the place. I think a really nice spot for one would be down here, maybe in this little in-cove thing. Let's remove those and then place in uh, some barrels and a composter. Might as well also chuck in a lantern on top of that bad boy as well. Now let's maybe head around over this way over yonder. Maybe let's remove these ones and do the same thing right here. Smack a lantern on- oh, that's not a lantern, what the hell? Smack a lantern on that bad boy. And maybe let's add one up here as well. Hell yeah, that looks awesome. Alright, well yeah, there's our farm done. We pretty much just need to wait for this to grow so it actually looks nice. And now it's time to move on to the next thing. That being some palm trees. Let's go ahead and add a couple of those around the island. I think it'll help make it look uh, extra nice. So I think for the first one, let's just add it maybe right... Uh, hmm, I don't know. Let's actually get a bit of an aerial shot here just to see uh, where it would look nice. Yeah, probably right about here. Let's just do it there. Okay, let's get rid of that bad boy and let's start adding on our jungle logs like this. Now, palm trees can be pretty hard to do and uh, get looking right, so yeah. I'll kind of make this a little tutorial as I go, why not? So yeah, we're adding in like a bit of a leaning kind of shaped tree here and we're going to add some leaves on like this. Then let's extend it off in the uh, in each direction here and then on the corners let's make them, uh, you know, just like that. I don't really know how to explain it to be honest. Then stemming away from all of these, we're going to add in some leaves kind of like this. Now, right now, it does look kind of weird. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I think we need to change this a little. Probably make that, like, kind of join a little bit higher up there. 
I'm gonna trample my goddamn crops. God. Now we need to crack out the old scaffolding. Okay, and now from here, we're going to add in a leaf like that. And we're gonna do the same thing. And this time, this one's gonna go down by two blocks like that. And uh, yeah, now we're just gonna do the same thing on every single side here. Okay, so there's all of our like straight ones. Now we need to add in some diagonal ones. And so those are simply going to be placed like this. We're gonna remove those ones and then they're just gonna go down like that. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's slap those onto every single section. All right, and there we go. There's our completed palm tree. I will just say it does look way better with the uh, better leaves add-on. There we go. So that's with the add-on on it. Yeah, the joins look a little bit more connected, you know, because it's got the big bushy leaves. So it just, it looks way better with the leaf add-on. And yeah, so there we go. There's our first palm tree. I might go around and just maybe add some along here. And of course, I'll do that as a time-lapse. So yeah, let's get started right bloody now, mate. All right, next what I think I'm gonna do is actually get rid of these details that I've added in this area because I've come up with a bit of a different idea. And that idea is to add some table and chairs into this area. I don't know what it's meant to be. Maybe like, I don't know, like a dining area. And maybe this is like a big restaurant or something. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm even building at this point. So just don't ask, okay? <laughs> so these are gonna be the chairs here. They're just simply some slabs surrounded by some signs like this. And then smack bang in the middle. Let's add in, uh, mm, how are we going to do it? table. Maybe let's do a fence with a uh, maybe a pressure plate on top. I think that's probably going to look the best. And then I want to have kind of like a cover over this. I don't know exactly, uh, you know, I don't seem to know a lot about this build, okay? But yeah, I just want like a nice kind of like leafy coverage of this. I don't know how to explain it. And I don't know how I'm going to build it. So yeah, let's just start slapping some fences down like this. Actually, I want to use oak fences just to differentiate it from the table and chairs. Ooh, actually, maybe something like this could... Oh, it's going to join up. God damn it, you little prick. Well, never mind. I can't do that. <laughs> let's try something like this at the back here. <laughs> that was my cat. He wants to get out. God damn it. All right, I'm coming, cat. I'm letting you out. I'll give him five minutes, and he'll be screaming at the door wanting to come back in. I guarantee it. Okay, continuing on. Let's head up here, up our scaffolding, and add a bit of, like, a leaf roof to this thing. Now, the only thing I don't really like is how much area one seating thing takes up, but I think it looks pretty nice. I actually do like the look of that. But something that I feel like it needs is maybe some, like, kind of uh, containment of the leaves. So let's try surrounding it with some trapdoors and some signs as well. And yeah, that's looking pretty cool. I really like that. One thing that we do need though is maybe to remove this and replace it with something else or even maybe if we do that that would look cool and put a lantern on that bad boy hell yeah that is awesome dude i really like that and so yeah i there we go i guess that's our first seating area done now i'm just going to pretty much repeat this same design in a bunch of other places and so yeah let's uh let's just do that right now oh god damn it i'm an idiot uh oh well <laughs> All right, so yeah, I think just two covered areas like that will look nice. And then maybe over here, we can just have some uncovered areas. Okay, there we go. There's our seating area all done. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do maybe down here. This is a very challenging build. Uh, definitely when you don't have any experience really building something quite in this style. Also, I think what'll look nice is uh, continuing this sandstone path throughout the stone. I think that's definitely going to look great. So let's quickly add that in as well. Yeah, just something super simple like that. Just continuing the pathway on. Definitely kind of keep the consistency going, I guess. All right, now what I think this is lacking in is just a little bit of extra decoration. I think we need to add some little things in between all of these, maybe some barrels. And I have a, a little bit of an interesting idea for something. I don't know if it's going to look good, but let's just try. And then we'll put some water in there. And it's just kind of like a, I don't know, some water. <laughs> I don't know what it's meant to be, but I think it looks cool. And then maybe over here, let's put a barrel and a composter, maybe to look like, you know, an empty version of that water thing. You know, it's just a big bucket. <laughs> we'll slap a lantern on that bad boy too. All right, next, I think we need like a fence that kind of encompasses this area. I don't know, it feels just too like open and uh, yeah. So I think some oak fences will look good for this, just to contrast all of the uh, spruce that we've been using. And yeah, there we go. Just something like that just kind of contains the area a little better. I'm happy with leaving it open over there just because I don't want it to be too contained, you know? And yeah, now, I don't know. I feel like we need like a dock down here or something that extends out a little further. I don't know if it's going to be too much because we already kind of have this dock here. So maybe let's just experiment with the idea and see how it looks. All right, so starting off, let's head down here. I think this is going to be a pretty small dock and I want it to be in line with the water here. So let's start adding it in like this. And then let's make the classic U shape that I always add in for like my boat docks. Maybe let's cap off the end 
ends with some trap doors instead, just to make it look a little more interesting. And yeah, literally just something super simple like that. Let's go make a quick little oak boat to put there as well. Oh my Jesus Christ. What is... Okay, settle down, mate. Let's chuck the oak boat in there, and uh, yeah, let's fly up and have a little look-see at our area so far. And yeah, that's looking awesome. I really like that little, like, pop of wood that's there. Oh my god, dude, I can't fly. And I need to increase the render distance. Okay, there we go. Now we can actually see it. I think there's too many trees here as well. Yeah, we definitely need to get rid of the trees that are in there. But our island is looking awesome so far, dude. Especially with all the crops over here slowly growing in. So yeah, now I'm just going to quickly remove a, a bunch of these trees. I might keep maybe a couple of oak trees in here. But uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, and yeah, there we go. That's looking better already. I've also gone ahead and just planted a bunch of saplings around the place as well, all around here. And I might even add some more around on this side too while I'm at it. Okay, and now with that all done, I think it's time to finally tackle our interior here. And uh, yeah, once again, right on cue, it's time for the rain. Yeah, so let's get onto this interior. Alright, now with all of our floor done, it's time to start decorating the interior for this, of which you can kind of see it's a little bit crazy at the moment. Now, I'm just going to quickly say I have literally zero experience with these kinds of builds. I think I've already said that before, but uh, yeah, so we're just going to see how we go. Don't expect something, uh, you know, spectacular. But so what I'm going to do here is use our wall blocks here, which is this just standard sandstone, and we're going to fill in some of these gaps here, and that'll give us a kind of face to work with here and place some stuff on. So I think first for this one here let's have a bit of a storage wall like that let's do something like that for that side and then uh, we'll just kind of mirror it on that side and uh, of course i need to make some more chests Okay, there we go. That is looking awesome. Hell yeah. And yeah, so it's going to be very difficult to kind of decorate these areas. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of add a bunch of little details around the place like this kind of stuff. All right, so right here is actually, I think, going to be a nice spot for a, a bit of a staircase. So let's start it off right here. And then it's going to go back into a staircase that'll lead all the way up to the roof. And yeah, so now we can use this staircase to, of course, head up to the second floor of which... Um, Hmm, what can we add up here, man? <laughs> God, this is so difficult. Okay, I think what'll look cool is maybe let's just have a whole bunch of this design repeating across. And uh, yeah, I guess we don't really need to go all the way down to the end. It might look kind of weird if we do. So let's just do that. Now let's maybe add like a central little island thing here. Honestly, I kind of want to leave up here a little bit more kind of sparsely placed uh, just because I don't want to, you know, cram it with crap and it might end up looking weird. That's definitely not an excuse for me not knowing what to do for up here. Actually, over in this area, we could probably add some stuff, maybe like a barrel. And yeah, we'll just leave that that like that just a nice little detail to add there is always uh nice okay and now back down to the bottom floor for this area maybe let's add in another little island thing this time let's have something like this okay that's a nice little detail and now i think we need like a bit of direction to the ground here so let's actually remove some of these slabs and start replacing them with some spruce ones as a bit of like a pathway that leads you throughout the house all right and there we go there's the floor all done that's looking pretty cool oh, i just got some inspiration for this area here. I think something that could look cool is like a bit of a wine, uh, like cellar kind of design like this. Usually I do it on like a flat kind of wall, but I think it looks pretty cool diagonal as well. Now we are lacking a lot of the details that I'd usually add into this, like pot plants and stuff, but I think even like fences like that, that looks really cool. I actually really like that. Honestly, don't know how I just came up with that, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Maybe let's find another spot over here to add it in if we can. Yeah, not really. There's not really any spots anywhere else we could add that, I don't think. Maybe in this corner, we can do something on a smaller scale like that and just have fences there. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, and honestly, I think that is sufficiently detailed. I do want it to be more of like an open kind of build. Once again, not an excuse, okay? Shut up. <laughs> oh, and yeah, there we go. With all of our trees grown in, this is going to look awesome from an aerial view. Our crops should be sufficiently grown as well. Oh, that looks so good. Let's get a quick aerial view of this bad boy. Oh, dude, that, I, I honestly, I don't know if I can say that's my nicest build yet, but that is looking so good. Oh my God. I did not, dude, honestly, I say this like almost every episode now, but I'm, I've gotten goosebumps. This time, not from 
from being scared, but from making a quite a nice looking build, I might say. Not to, you know, toot my own horn, but I think I've done a pretty decent job with this one, boys and girls. And uh, just doing that flyby has actually given me an idea for another thing that we could quickly add that'll definitely add a little bit of detail. And that is putting some buttons on all of these little cross sections around the place here. All right, now with all those buttons added on, let's take another final look here of our island. And hell yeah, those just add in a nice little bit of detail and it matches our house up there as well. That's awesome, dude. Deep within the jungle of my hardcore world, there lies a quite unique area. I spotted it while I was creating my jungle village just over the treetops. Upon discovery, I noted down the coordinates and promptly forgot about it until now. I'm gonna dedicate an entire week to making this the best build I've created so far on this world. So, starting off on day one, let's get started. Before I made my way over to the spot, I needed to get a couple quick things done, with the first being grabbing these shulkers with some items from the previous episode. Next, I made my way over to my automatic melon farm to get some XP to repair my shovel and elytra, because we'll definitely be needing them. And finally, I needed more fireworks, so I made my way down to my giant cave to kill some creepers for gunpowder. And after that absolute slaughter of me getting exploded like three times, we ended up with a bunch of fireworks and then I made my way over to the build location. Now, if memory serves right, it should be just here. Yes, here it is. Hell yeah, dude. Meanwhile, my computer is freaking exploding, man. Jesus Christ. I think it's time for an upgrade, boys. The old 2080 Ti just isn't cutting it anymore. I think it's time to go to the 4090. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, here's the area. It's looking uh, pretty cool, dude. Honestly, I don't know what it is about it. It just looks so cool. Like, it's like a giant zen garden almost, like in the middle of this massive jungle. It's pretty cool. And so I think to get started, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just terraform this and smoothen everything off a little bit. So let's get started right now. Holy mother of God, that took way too long. I mean, it really wasn't that long. It was like maybe two hours, I think. Not too bad, but yeah, now it is time to get started filling up our oasis with some water. Yeah, I don't want this whole oasis to just be one block deep. So I think I'm going to maybe add like a secondary circle in here. Uh, so just give me a second and I'll add that in real quick. Okay, there we go. There's our, oh, what the f did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> There's our oasis done, and I just realized it probably would have been easier if I had added the water first, uh, because, yeah, now it's gonna do this crap. Um, well, you live and you learn, I guess. Uh, but yeah, now it is time to add in the water. So, uh, yeah, once again, let's just do another real quick time lapse. With the oasis completely filled with water, I then went on to adding some palm tree designs surrounding the oasis, and I also added some bushes between them too. And with all of that done, that marks the end of day one. Hey, that rhymed. Starting off day two, we're doing some bowling with the boys. What do you say about that, mate? <laughs> yeah? Let's get going. Do you guys want to see my balls? My bowling balls, that is. Let's take a look. Oh, you can kind of see me in there. Don't look at that. Here we've got the super grippy boy. Then we've got the uh, medium grip and then the spare ball grip. And then over here, we've got the low grippy boy as well. Uh, yeah, that's the grand tour of my balls. All right, we're strapped in, ready to go. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, yeah, don't worry about that. It's all good. <laughs> Rightio, boys, off we go. Alright, gamers, we're here. Let's get bowling. Oh, Alright, that was a good day of bowling, wasn't it, mister? Time to head back home and uh, continue building. No, 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 resist on your pew. Once I returned home from that epic bowling session, it was time to begin creating some of the house designs for our village. I started off with the most basic house design, a pretty small 5x5 house. I ended up with this design for the walls here, and then I finished off the rest of the house. Then, as for the interior, I went with something super basic, just a bed with a chest and a furnace. And that's it for the most basic house design. Now, with a general idea of how I want to make these houses, I laid out the pillars for a bit of a larger one. Once I was happy with the layout, it was time to add in all of the walls. So 
So at this point, it's coming along quite nicely, but it definitely needed a bit more verticality. So I started adding in an extra top section. And once that was done, I finished off the house by adding in the rest of all of the details. Then it was of course onto the interior. I added a staircase to get up to the second floor and just some random details as well. And now with these two builds done, I'm just gonna do the rest of what I'll be able to do today as a time lapse. So let's get started. With the first lot of houses now done, I added in a circular pathway made of stone, gravel, and andesite, and linked those up to each house. And that's everything I managed to get done on the second day. Starting off day three, this is how our village is looking so far. It's coming along quite nicely, however, it's definitely lacking some life and decorations. Right now, it's just a bunch of houses. So for our first decoration, I'm starting with something pretty generic that I use in basically every one of my villages, a barrel pile. And with that first one done, I went around and added a whole bunch more everywhere. Okay, now with all of those added in, it's time to start off with another detail that I want to add, which is going to be some little water channel river things. I don't really know how to explain it, but I think it's going to look pretty cool. So we're going to start off with something like that. I need to go and grab my freaking water buckets. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. Now we can actually place some water in these stairs here. And yeah, these are just going to kind of look like little water channels that are going to run throughout the area. And then as we transition to this part in the pathway, I think it'd be cool to have like a little bridge thing, I guess. It might actually look better if we actually remove these blocks here. And then we're going to have it go back to the stairs here. And let's maybe just curve it around over this way and end it over here. And yeah, that's pretty cool. Just like a nice little river. And then we can just kind of add these around the place just to add a little bit of water and, uh, you know, lushness to the village. Next, I decided to add some details to the buildings to make them stand out a bit more from each other because right now they all look very similar. So the first detail I added was this gazebo roof design thing made of trapdoors and slabs. The next detail I added to this building is some very small custom tree designs as if they're being grown on these rooftops or something like that. Then for the next one I went with some loose bushes on the rooftops that drape down the sides of the walls. These are meant to be sort of roof plants that have gotten a bit overgrown and are starting to take over the building. And so with those three rooftop designs done I went ahead and repeated them on the rest of most of the roofs. Okay, and now with all of those little additions, our town is starting to look awesome, dude. This thing looks so nice. Like, I would honestly, I would not hesitate to live here in real life, I swear to God. Now, if you couldn't tell by my inventory, I have another idea for a pretty nice addition to this area, which would be some farms. I think adding some in, like, these little areas in front of the houses and stuff would look awesome. So, yeah, I'm just going to start adding those in. And once again, this is probably going to be another time lapse starting right now. To start off day four, I think what I want to do is differentiate all of the houses even further by making some of them into profession buildings, uh, if that makes any sense. You know, like uh, starting off maybe with a blacksmith on this building right here. So what I want to do for this one is make sort of like a roofed area here. We're going to have to remove some of these details that we added before. And then let's add some supports on the ends here with just some spruce fences like so. Next, I want to add like a forgery kind of area. Well, not forgery, but like a forge. I, uh, I don't know. Okay, shut the hell up. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to do this, so I'm kind of winging it right now. Let's make this like a solid back here, and then we'll put our lava bucket in there. Oh my god, dude, I almost just fell in that. Freaking A. What am I doing, brother? And hell yeah, that's looking awesome. I really like the look of that. It's like a nice kind of blocky design. Hell yeah, that's looking awesome. I really like that. For our next profession, I want to go over to this building over here. Let's actually remove this uh, barrel pile that we added in here. And so this one's going to be our woodcutting uh, profession building. I don't know what to call it, dude. Freaking hell. And so what I'm thinking is we have maybe a gap of three, and then we'll add in a plot of dirt. This is going to be sort of like a growing area for trees, of course. There we go. And that should look pretty nice once those have grown in. And of course, here's the rain right on cue. 
Oh my god, dude. And now beside the house, like between the house and the growing area, I think what would look nice is like a whole bunch of log piles around here. So first up, let's do something like this with some extinguished campfires on top and uh, in front as well. And then maybe even on the right side as well over here, let's add another little log pile too. And hell yeah, that's looking awesome. We'll come back to this and just get a quick little look once the uh, trees have actually grown in here. Now for the next house, I want to make it into a potion shop. I'm not sure which one yet, but we're gonna have to go back to the nether and get some blades rods so that we can make some brewing stands. So let's quickly head to the nether. Okay, we're back at the nether fortress here. I've got my extra armor on just so I don't freaking die. Let's go ahead and uh, just slaughter a whole bunch of these blazers so that we can make a bunch of brewing stands. Okay, I just remembered that brewing stands only need one uh, freaking blaze rod, so we definitely have more than enough here. Let's get out of this hellhole and back to... Oh my god, I forgot I had... I forgot... Jesus Christ, man. Well, there's the goosebumps for the episode. I completely forgot I did not have my elytra on it. Jesus Christ, dude. The goosebumps are flowing throughout my freaking body right now, man. We need to be more careful, dude. Ugh. Okay, now let's fly back to the village. Okay, this house looks pretty good for a potion shop takeover. Let's head on inside and make the interior real quick. So I think what would definitely look nice is maybe having a table like this with some brewing stands on there. I just realized I wanted to add a shelf above this, but oh, actually I might be able to because this area actually goes up. Hell yeah, we can do that. Let's add a shelf above this with another three brewing stands like so. Then I think what we need here is actually a ladder. Let me go grab some real quick. There we go. Let's add those on. Hell yeah. And let's also add like another table down here and add a lantern on there as well. Let's add that in right in the corner here and put some water in there too. That looks awesome. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm back with some more stuff. I also just went ahead and grabbed some bone meal to uh, grow the rest of these trees just to see how it'll look. And of course, I ran out on the bloody last one. But yeah, that's kind of the general look that we'll have. I think some fences in all of the corners with a lantern on would look awesome. Let's add those in. Sorry, I'm kind of getting sidetracked here. But yeah, there we go. That's how the orchid, uh, not orchid, but like tree farm is going to look. That's pretty cool. Let's go back to the potion shop now. And now for some final things for the interior. I think a couple of barrels along here would look nice. Now for the final thing for the potion shop, let's head outside and I've actually gone ahead and grabbed some soul sand and nether warts and we're going to replace this wheat farm that we've added in instead with a nether wart farm. So yeah, I thought that was a nice addition because most of the potion shop is like, you know, on the interior. So I think some exterior indication that this is a potion shop is uh, pretty cool. For the final village profession building today, I decided on creating a Fletcher slash archery range in this building here. First, I began removing this section of the wall for the archery range. I then replaced the ground with dirt, added some archery targets in, and added some grass and extinguished campfires onto the ground. And to finish up this area, I added in some ceiling lanterns. For the interior, I added some fletching blocks with a table and some other decorations, and in the corner, a barrel with a couple of chests. For some finishing touches, I added a chest here with a bow and some arrows inside, and I added some slabs here so you don't have to jump up to reach the archery range. And so, with all of that done, that concludes day four. After loading in the world today, I took a look at the whole village and decided that it needs more houses. So I began adding in some more in places that I could with some new designs too. For this one here, I decided to add an exterior staircase that leads up to the second floor instead of an interior one just to add some variety. For the next house, I added a big balcony area off to the side with some random stuff underneath it to make it a workshop of sorts. Then that gave me the idea to make a sort of village storage area, so I fenced off this section and filled it with a bunch of barrels and chests. And then I just went on to filling up the rest of the available space we have with a variety of house designs. L-shaped, T-shaped, U-shaped, Z-shaped. Okay, probably not the Z-shaped. But yeah, you name it and it's probably in there. Gamers, it's the second last day I have to work on this and I still feel like it needs more houses, but we don't have any area to work with. So my plan is to terraform the entire surrounding area and expand into the jungle as much as I can today because we're running out of time. Let's get started. The first area I began working on is this big section here, just to the right of the woodcutting building. Then I moved to this area here, which was an absolute pain in the ass because it was mostly stone, so it took forever. 
At this point, I decided I wanted the city to be more circular, so I busted out the old circle generator, counted the size we'd need, and then I used that to outline our area so it'd be a perfect circle. This also meant more excavation, of course, and all up, this excavating took about three hours to do, but it was definitely worth it. Gamers, I'm freaking out. It's the final day, we don't have a lot of time, and we have a lot of work to do. We need to fill up this entire area that we terraformed yesterday with buildings, so let's get into it. First, I wanted to create an animal barn of sorts. I didn't really know how to make one in this style, but I think it turned out pretty good. Next, it was onto a giant mansion building, which could serve as a town hall or just someone in the village that lives luxuriously. And then I went on to just filling up the rest of the village with a variety of different house designs. And while I'm building these, I just wanted to mention I'm going to start creating builds on a much larger scale in this series, starting obviously with this episode. Previously, I've been spending around a week, give or take, per episode, but now with larger scale builds, I'll be dialing back on the upload frequency in exchange for some much higher quality videos. So I really hope you enjoy this style of hardcore video. I know it's still not as crazy of a project as some other YouTubers, but I'm trying my best out here. Most of you probably don't no, but I've still got a full-time job on top of being a parent, so I don't have a lot of free time, but I'm not trying to make excuses. Overall, YouTube is my absolute passion and always will be until I cark it. So I'm sorry for the long-winded talk, but in summary, less frequent uploads, higher quality videos. Alright, and so that just about concludes my absolute biggest project and video yet on my channel. If you want to download this village and explore it for yourself, it's available on my Patreon along with every other build I've ever created. My hardcore world is lacking in a few areas, to say the least. But instead of upgrading just those builds, I decided to go on a journey to every single build I've created in this world and upgrade all of them. Let's get started. So, on my giant list of things to upgrade, our first one involves adding some detailed pathways to connect our main villages and builds together. Here's an extremely high quality sketch of my idea. So, yeah, with that done, let's get started. So, first up, I linked up my current base to my old base and the other entrance to our main village here. I also planted a bunch trees along the path too and added some lanterns and big lamp posts as well. Next I continued this path all the way down to our fishing village over here. And then I finally connected this pathway up to the entrance of the village. Next up, I linked this new pathway up over to our farming village as well. And as for some of the details along the path, we have this simple little bench design. Then keeping it simple, I also made a barrel pile. Next, it was onto a bit of a wagon design, as if someone had left it abandoned alongside the path or something like that. And finally, I added this small pond design just outside my main base too. Now with all of our pathways finally done, our area is looking so much better. Everything is connected and it's actually looking like a proper village. This was definitely a well overdue, so I'm very glad we finally got this done. For those of you that are interested in downloading and exploring my builds, every single one I'll be upgrading in this video is available to download right now on my Patreon. Alright, back to the video. You probably know by now that the way I've been getting gunpowder for fireworks is by flying into the big cave and slaughtering creepers, and almost dying to them too, but we are, uh, yeah, we don't talk about that. So, it's time to make a creeper farm. Once we arrived at a spot I liked in the ocean, I started building the collection platform, which just consists of a bunch of hoppers and some double chests. Next, I went on to creating the creeper collection area which consists of some open fence gates here to stop the water that I then also placed down. The water being of course to push the creepers down into the hopper area. Once that was done I built the area that'll hold the snow golems and we need them to attract the creepers down into the holes here. I also added some open trap doors along those holes so that the creepers think those are full blocks. Then I of course created all of the golems, eight in total, and punched them into their positions. And with all of the technical stuff now done it's time to create the spawning platform. Next, I created a giant pillar to AFK on so that the creepers only spawn in our farm. And once that was done, I let the farm run for about 30 minutes to see how much gunpowder we'd get. Alright, it's been about 30 minutes, let's jump down and check out how much we got. Alright, at least we know it's working, it's going good. Let's check the chests. Chest number one, holy crap, okay, we've got two stacks and 14. 
Oh my god. I did not expect that much. Holy crap. And the last chest? Okay, not as many. That's okay. Dude, that is a lot. I'm gonna quickly uh, calculate how much this is real quick. All right, so that right there is 716 gunpowder, if my uh, calculations are correct. That is honestly amazing. I'm so glad we never have to worry about fireworks again and like literally almost dying to creepers. And yeah, so now with the creeper farm all done, let's head back home and get started on the next upgrade. Uh... I don't remember the way home. <laughs> God, all this upgrading is making your boy hungry. I think it's time for a healthy and balanced dinner. All right, gamers, here we are in my kitchen with all of the needed ingredients here to make a fully balanced uh, Australian dinner, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and grab out some of our bread here. We're going to chuck those into the toaster. One's gonna have Vegemite, cheesy Vegemite specifically. And we're gonna put some cheese on that bad boy too. And then the other piece is gonna have avocado and egg and cheese. So uh, yeah, let's cut up a few slices of cheese. Okay, there we go. You always gotta cut off a piece for yourself. Mwah. It's so good. Okay, the egg is coming along nicely. Check that out. Oh. Okay, so there's the butter. Uh, it's definitely a, a generous amount of butter. Okay, that's the way I like it. Shut up. Now we're going to apply the uh, good old cheesy Vegemite because this, this honestly, I'm sorry, but this is bussin', literally. Now we're going to chuck our cheese pieces onto that bad boy making sure to choose the thickest pieces because we're gonna be melting this in the grill. Now it's time to butter the next piece of toast. Once again, a generous heaping of avocado here. I'm also going to apply our cheese slices to this. And now it's time to apply our egg to said toast. I'm looking through the camera, so that made that really difficult. I Trust me, I'm way more coordinated, I swear. <laughs> there we go, there's our first piece. Uh, well, it's not done yet, we gotta get the salt. Yes! And some pepper. Um, yeah, I can't do this with one hand, so yeah. Get some ASMR sounds. So there's our first piece done. You gotta take a complimentary bite, of course. I may put too much pepper on that. It's pretty good though. Now we just have to wait for our last piece that's in the grill, okay? Give me a second. Also, uh, don't forget to turn the hot plate off, okay? Um, I've done that before, maybe more than once. <laughs> oh, and by golly gee, mate, check that bad boy out. We're gonna slide that straight onto the plate. Now, I'm gonna go take this to the room and absolutely devour this, and uh, we'll get straight back into some upgrading. Just give me a second. Now that we're all full and ready to continue gaming, let's move on to upgrading our main village here. It's the first one we built in this world, and it definitely needs a bit of love. Let's get started. Now, the first thing I thought we should add is some more trees because there really aren't many in this village. There's only some around the big cave entrance in the middle. Then I went on to adding some more details around the place like some of these wagon designs. They're a great decoration for any sort of medieval village and I felt they would fit right in. Next up, we of course need more houses. There's quite a few gaps around the place, especially up here near the nether portal. So I added a few of these smaller house designs here. I found a great spot for a bit of a longer house, so I began adding one in right here. I then went around and added a bunch more smaller houses around in some spots I could, and finished up with an L-shaped one back near the nether portal. And so with all those upgrades done, this village is looking so much better. Now onto the next thing I want to upgrade, which is actually over this way, that being our two iron golem starter farms. Now I'm not really talking about upgrading the efficiency of these, I mean I've got enough iron to last a bloody lifetime across these two. So I mainly want to improve the looks of this and just add a nice little cover over this and I'll also chip away at some of the land here to hopefully uh, stop these guys from spawning out here as well. First off I started removing a whole bunch of this land around here to hopefully increase the spawn rate and then I started adding in this nice cover consisting of some spruce wood and some glass as well. And then I of course just repeated that same design over on the other farm and then I just removed a whole bunch more dirt around this one too. Oh I'm so glad we finally got this done. I've been meaning to do this for quite a long time now and I'm very glad that we finally have a nice little cover over these. Hell yeah. Next let's head on over to our farming village. Now I really like this main area here. It's got a bunch of houses and even a market area as well. But once you take the bridge over to the second area it's a little bit lackluster. There's only three houses here. So to upgrade this village I'm gonna add a few more houses in here and I also think the entire village needs a wall surrounding it as well. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I did was of course just build a whole bunch of these standard house designs in this little area just to expand it a bit because it is a little bit too small of an area in my opinion. And so with 
of those new houses added in, I then started building a wall around this area consisting of stone and stone bricks, alternating between the two. And once that was done, I started adding in that same wall design across the bigger area as well. And with the walls done, I brought some villagers over to inhabit the newly upgraded village. And there we go, there's our fully upgraded farming village. It's looking super nice with the walls added on. Um, this one is definitely a little bit oddly shaped, if you saw that. Um, yeah, I didn't really think of that. But yeah, we've got our villagers added in over there. They're already starting a nice little family. I'll eventually branch them off over into this village as well to fill this one up. But yeah, that just about does it for our farming village upgrades. Next up, it's time to upgrade the jungle village. Here it is. As you can see, it is pretty small. I didn't have a lot of time to work on this at the time. I'm still really happy with the way it turned out, but it could definitely be expanded quite a bit. So yeah, I'm going to crack out the old jungle wood and get started expanding this village. All right, so for the first upgrade, we're headed over to the left side of the village to add a bunch more new platforms. I expanded to pretty much as many trees as I could over here, connecting them all up with bridges and ladders. I also added a bed, chests, crafting tables, and barrels to every platform form too to make it look like more of a house of sorts. That's the left side of the village done, now let's head towards the right side and add a few more platforms in this area too. And now with all our expansions done, our treetop village is looking awesome. It almost looks like a treetop city now, which is pretty cool. Next up, it's onto something that's been bugging me for a long time now. I honestly don't really like using cobblestone in my builds, but I had to for this base as it was my starter base. I didn't have a lot of time and resources, but now I do. And it's time to fix it. Let's get started. So my replacement blocks of choice for this wall ended up being some stone for the main wall, and then I capped it off with some stone brick slabs. I feel like it's a nice combination and looks way better and like a more established type of wall. After that was all done, I also finally filled in the rest of our farms here, and I also went around and fixed up all the patches made by, uh, who knows what. And there we go, just a quick little upgrade, but it makes the whole build look so much better. On to the next one. The way I've been repairing my tools is getting XP from selling melons to my farming villages. Now, I don't have to tell you that that method kind of sucks. So let's upgrade by building an XP farm. So first, I of course needed to find a spawner, so I flew into the giant cave and scoured the place. After a few minutes, I found a spider spawner, which I just could not be bothered dealing with. I then traveled into this mine shaft, found another spider spawner, which I destroyed, uh, and after a few minutes of some more exploring, I found this zombie spawner. Now with the spawner located, it was on to excavating a large area around it to improve the spawn rates. I then began excavating a second area and also dug up to the surface, which happened to be right next to the farmhouse. How lucky is that? Heading back down, I began construction on the zombie collection and slaughtering area with some hoppers and chests to collect the items. I also created the mechanism to bring the zombies from the spawner to the collection area, and then created the big tunnel the zombies will travel down, and after digging the wrong way, it was all done. I then built the glass tube to see the zombies going through the system and filled it with water. Then it was onto testing, and unfortunately I had made it one block too tall, and after lowering the whole thing, it was working perfectly. And to finish up down here, I just changed all the blocks to stone. Onto the exterior, I decided to upgrade it from a simple hole in the ground to this little hut design. I also made sure to connect our new hut up to the pathway as well. And here it is in action, working perfectly. I'm so glad I can now just easily come down here to repair my tools and armor. Hell yeah. Next up, the desert village from the previous episode. Now I already spent a week on this build, so there isn't really anything I can think of to upgrade, except the fact that I completely forgot to add villages to it. So I flew to the farming village, picked out two candidates to start the new desert family, and carted them through the plains and the dense house jungle all the way into our desert village. Now, of course they need food to breed, so let's quickly go get some carrots. And now I just remembered they also need beds. So uh, yeah, let's go make some of those. And uh, wow, I think I'm brain dead or something. They need houses too. And well, there's houses right here. So I just added a bunch of beds in those and fenced off a little neighborhood. And so I've just come back after giving them a bunch of time to breed. And yeah, here we go. We've got a whole bunch of villages and now I'm gonna set them free to roam in their new giant village here. Off you go, fellas. Go explore, make some new friends. Uh, yeah. 
On to the next upgrade. The Underwater Village is among one of my most favorite builds I've created in this world, however it could definitely do with a little bit of expanding. Thankfully I have a heap of leftover resources from building this village, so let's expand it and add some other interesting things too. For the first build I created a submarine bay, a building high up on stilts that'd have enough clearance for a little submarine to dock underneath. Then it was onto creating said submarine. I wanted it to be floating in the water here as if it had just departed onto an ocean adventure. And now I just wanted to expand the village a bit more by adding some extra house designs. I already feel like this village is pretty large, so I kept the expansions on the smaller side. It's definitely not because I ran out of resources. I then added some more detail to the submarine bay because I felt it looked a little bit weird. I also built one more house to the left of the submarine bay to fill in this empty space. And finally I added in some pathways and also added some sand underneath the submarine bay too. And there we go, our underwater village is now looking way bigger and way better. On to the next upgrade. Okay, let's take a look at the map and see what we've upgraded so far. So we've done the desert village, jungle village, farming village, I'm gonna leave out the island upgrade because honestly I don't know what I'd upgrade, and I think it looks pretty good already. We've also upgraded the underwater village, built a creeper farm, and coming back to the main area, we've added in a pathway, upgraded the main village, farmhouse, and iron farm, and we also built an XP farm. So next, I think we should upgrade our main base here. Now I already have sort of upgraded this base in a previous episode where I built the secret underground base, but if we take a look upstairs, this bitch is empty. So let's fill it with shit. So first off, I headed to the left side and added in a big sprawling brewing area. I made sure to add heaps of barrels to this area for storage as well. Then in this area, I built a nether wart farm, so whenever I need them, they're right there. I also made this cute little thing with some chests and also added some lights around too. Then, heading over to the opposite side of the base, I wanted to make an indoor greenhouse of sorts. So I created a big table filled with pot plants and a bunch of grass blocks with various plants. I also added some of these houseplant designs around as well. And yeah, that's it for the upgrade to my main base here. I'm glad we've finally filled up this second floor and it's looking amazing. On to the next one. The fishing village is one of my favorites. I love fishing dock builds and turning one into a whole village is just awesome. But this one suffers the same problem as the others. It's not as big as I wanted it to be. So the first thing I did was expand by adding a whole extra row of houses behind the original ones. I added a couple L-shaped buildings and a bunch of smaller ones as they're able to fit in some of these harder to build locations like up here on the hillside. To finish up the buildings, I added a big T-shaped one here as well. And then heading over to the dock, I added in this big crane design and filled the entire dock up with some nice decorations as well. Alright, and there we go, there's the finished fishing village. A little bit of expanding done, we've added a whole bunch of houses around here, and adding this little crane design as well just ties it all together, and we also added a whole bunch of details onto this dock, which was definitely needed. So yeah, fishing village, now done, let's move on to the next upgrade. For the next upgrade, we need to head all the way over to our Cherry Village, which is uh, a couple thousand blocks in this direction. So uh, yeah, let's head over there right now. Oh my god, did you see that? Dude, I just realized my elytra is about to break. Oh my god, I thought I was gonna die then, and there was water- That was so lucky, dude. Holy crap. Well, yeah, that kind of sucks, but we're almost there, I think. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to repair this, because I do not want to have to walk all the way back. I might just wait for nighttime and maybe slaughter a whole bunch of mobs or something, but yeah, that was, uh, very scary. So, I'm probably just gonna walk the rest of the way to the village. And here we are at the Cherry Village. Once again, it's a bit on the small side, so let's add some more buildings and I want to change a few other things too. So the first thing I did was flatten off some land here and then I started adding in some more house designs. This area specifically definitely needed some houses, so I concentrated my efforts mostly here. Then heading a bit further up into the hillside, I found a nice spot to add a longer style of house. 
and I finished up at the far right of the village with a nice L-shaped building and a smaller house too. Now with all of our houses done, I decided to replace all of our coarse dirt and dirt path with some stone and stone bricks as I felt it would look much better, which I definitely think it does. Alright, and that just about covers every single build in my world upgraded. Just as a reminder, every single build we upgraded this episode is available to download on my Patreon, so go check it out. Alright, and that just about does it for episodes 15 to 21 in my Hardcore series. If you want to keep watching, the next episode is right here, if it's uploaded yet. Otherwise, just watch whatever's there. It's a good video, I promise. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.